Prologue. An angry male voice was heard from afar. I closed my eyes and thought about my current situation. This was the town of rookie adventurers, Axel. It is known as the Town of Beginnings, a place where low-level adventurers could find party members. That's right. We left the Crimson Demon Village to reach here, and protected a caravan along the way. The reward was a stay in this hotel. If I knew it would be like this, I wouldn't have come to this parallel world. Restart. I want a restart. As I reminisced, a complaining voice shouted again. Parallel world? Was someone drunk downstairs? I'm the one who wants a restart, you shut in. If I had to come no matter what, I would choose to come with a handsome hero to pamper me. Who wants a useless bin sprout like you? You bitch. What were they arguing about? I got out of bed and opened the window. An eye-catching sunset dyed the sky of Axel Red. On the streets, there was a group of adventurers who were returning after completing a quest. They were covered in satisfied smiles despite looking somewhat worn out. These adventurers were not well equipped. They didn't even have someone in proper armor. It was a small party that was poorly balanced, its members consisting solely of vanguards and rear guards. One couldn't blame them. This is the town of rookie adventurers after all. For me, this town was the starting point. I was merely passing through. I should be staying here only for a short while. I held onto the window frame and looked out at the golden-haired adventurer who seemed to be returning after completing a mission. That person said happily to the companions behind him. Hey, we defeated more than expected today. Why don't we be extravagant? Great. I want a warm green neroid and tokarotten slime set meal. Yahoo! I want ice-cold beer and fried frog nugget set meal. Hey, hey, even if you want to be extravagant, you should upgrade your equipment first. Sigh. Never mind, it's fine once in a while. I also want ice-cold beer and fried frog nugget set meal. As an archwizard, I expected to perform and become famous worldwide. Although I did not intend to stay in this rookie town for long. Lynn. Keith. Taylor. We must drink our fill this time. The adventurers in this town seemed very happy. Chapter 1, Adventurers of the Town of Beginners Part 1 After defeating Arnis, the stalker who was after Komiusuk, we received some money as a reward from the caravan leader, as well as an arrangement to stay in this high-class hotel. Hey, stop joking. How can a modern man like me sleep in a stable? Upon arriving in this town, I slept like a log and woke up to the sound of an argument downstairs. The room arranged for me by the caravan leader was deep inside on the second floor. The argumentative voices came from downstairs again. I don't want to sleep in a stable either. But we have no money, so we have no choice. It seemed to be an argument between people who couldn't endure living in a stable. They must be rookie adventurers new to this town. I rubbed my sleepy eyes and stretched my back on the bed. The sky was darkening, so it should be around evening. This is different from what I expected of an adventurer's life. An adventurer should make a lot of money, then live in the best room, and drink until he's drunk for the next two days. Why are you telling me that for? We only have one thousand Eris left of the money that Eris Church Uncle gave to us. We'll use this money for dinner, then quickly get to sleep. To damn it. I didn't come here to live like this. I listened to the voices and walked to the neighboring room where a union stayed. Axel, the town where rookie adventurers gather. This is the town that every adventurer would visit at least once. Ionion, are you awake? Some noisy adventurers woke me up. Want to have dinner on the first floor? After knocking on the neighboring door, a sleepy-eyed Ionion opened it. You don't need to force yourself if you still want to sleep, you know? I want to go. It's rare for me to be invited to dinner, after all. After Union made such a sad statement, we walked down the stairs. Most hotels utilize the first floor as a tavern and a pub. Perhaps because it was dinner time, the pub was very crowded. We found an empty spot and ordered this town's specialty, fried frog set meal. I ate the set meal and asked Union about our future plans. Okay. 
Although we had a lot of incidents today, we are currently in an unfamiliar town. We have no time to casually get into the right mood. Let's set our itinerary for tomorrow. That's true. We need to take on quests to cover the cost of living. So we must recruit companions. Recruit companions, ha. Huh? Then we should visit the Adventurers Guild in this town. You also intend to recruit companions, Eonian? I can't move after using explosion magic, so I have no choice but to be in a party. But you can probably clear simple quests alone, right? It's discomforting to be mobbed by monsters, so I want adventuring companions too. We can live and eat together in this hotel. After finishing a big quest, we can cheer and drink in the pub. A. I left the village because that's how things went, but this is unexpectedly good. Eonion mumbled as she picked up the fried frog with her fork. In that case, we will find companions tomorrow. The Adventurers Guild should have a notice board for party recruitment. We'll take a look there, then ask how to take on quests. I left behind Eonion, whose eyes were sparkling dreamily, and gathered information from the other customers in the pub. There was another mission I must complete in this town. Excuse me. May I have a moment of your time? Oh, what is it, little girl? Why are you in a place like this at this time of night? Your mother will be worried. You should go home early. I approached two uncles at a nearby table and was treated like a kid. No. I'm an adventurer who fights solo. Look at this, if you don't believe me. I was a bit frustrated at being treated like a kid, so I pushed my adventurer's card in his face. So sorry, I was wrong. So, what's the matter, little girl? There is something I'd like to ask. I heard that in this town, there is a mage who can use explosion magic. Explosion magic? Perhaps they did not understand the arcane jargon, as both of them looked doubtful. That's the strongest offensive magic. I heard there is a pretty and powerful mage with big breasts in this town. A pretty and powerful mage with big breasts. Ah, that should be the shop owner. That's right. It should be that poor shop owner. Po poor shop owner? I received an unexpected answer. She is the famous owner of a magic item shop in this town. Yeah. She used to be an adventurer. She is a very powerful mage. A powerful mage who was a former adventurer. Is she the person I was looking for? But I was a bit bothered by the description of her being poor. She was a serious and reliable person, yet her business sense was terrible. I asked for the shop address and engraved it in my mind. Once I knew the address, I could visit her any time I wanted. Although I wanted to let her witness my growth immediately. Well, that can wait after I have become an adventurer in this town. I was a bit timid when it was time to actually meet her. Part 2 Okay, E. Onilan, let's go. Be enthusiastic. I I know, but why are you so excited early in the morning? We didn't even do any research on this town, and headed to the Adventurers Guild bright and early in the morning. What are you saying? Our lives as adventurers that we were looking forward to are starting today. Having thrilling battles with strong, unknown monsters, blowing them away with my explosion magic. I'm nearly bursting just thinking about it. How can I not be excited? Facing me as I excitedly waved my staff in the streets. I I know, but please keep your voice down. Eonion embarrassedly said as she looked around. As it was still early, there were few people in the streets. We came to the Adventurers Guild to find companions. Before the doors, the future hero candidates were ready to make trouble. I stopped before the door and said to Eonion, who was panting. Eonion, listen. The first impression is very important. The Adventurers Guild is full of rowdy people, who will look down on young rookies like us. To avoid that, we must declare our names in a loud voice. The Crimson Demons must not be underestimated. Ah. Please don't let there be any scary people. Please don't let there be any scary people. I opened the door and flicked my cloak, declaring loudly. My name is Megumin. The top mage of the Crimson Demons, who specializes in explosion. Magic. There was nobody there. Oh how embarrassing. 
Ionion blushed and shivered behind me as she hugged Komiusuk. Hearing this, my face reddened somewhat. Coming. Ah, how can I help you this fine morning? An one san came forward from deep inside the seemingly empty guild. She looked like a guild staff. I looked at the guild again. Forget about adventurers taking on jobs, there weren't even any normal customers in the tavern. I readjusted my mindset and approached the one san at the counter. Goo good morning. I'm Megumin, an archwizard. This is my first time being an adventurer, so I don't know what to do. Ah, your eyes. You must be a crimson demon, right? I see. If I remember correctly, crimson demons receive their adventurer's cards in school. Then, do you have your card? I need to examine it before you can take on quests, checking for issues like criminal records. Excuse me, is it okay if I wait a little longer? I would prefer it to be when there are more adventurers around. Question mark sure. I left the bewildered One San and sat at a nearby table. Megumin, aren't you submitting your card? I will do it first if you aren't. Go ahead. I'll do it when there are more people around. Ionion seemed confused and handed her card to the receptionist. Let me see. A. Th that's the crimson demons for you. This is my first time seeing someone with this much magic power. Th thanks. I listened to their conversations and smiled, waiting for people to arrive. Part 3. The guild eventually became crowded. Some people were eating at the tavern, while others were looking at the notice board for jobs. I listened to the din typical at a tavern and said to myself. It's almost time. Eonion, who was eating noodles, lifted her head to look at me as I stood up. Say, why did you wait until it gets crowded to submit your card? It was empty earlier. I said, I'll be right back to Eonion who didn't understand anything, and walked over to the receptionist. By the way, there is a convention for choosing the receptionist. I must choose the most beautiful receptionist. This type of receptionist usually has a shocking background, such as being the guild's poster girl or a powerful ex-adventurer. I learned this in school. It was common knowledge as an adventurer. Next. Oh, you are a crimson demon? A beautiful receptionist with big breasts and wavy hair said as she looked at my eyes. As you can see, I'm a crimson demon. From today onwards, I intend to use this town as a base, so I'm here to submit my adventurer's card for examination. I see. Let me take a look. T this is? Awesome, that's the crimson demons for you. Your intelligence and magic power stats are so high. The receptionist said in shock, and the adventurers took notice of the disturbance. This was it. This was what I wanted. A receptionist who was shocked by my stats and thus made the other adventurers take notice. This way, I wouldn't be underestimated by the adventurers in this town. Your magic power is not as high as the person who came yesterday, but it is still quite high. Good. No criminal record. The card is genuine. You may take on quests now. A. Sorry, wait a moment. Not as high as the person who came yesterday? That means, there's someone who has even more magic power than me? Yes. It was someone who registered as an adventurer yesterday. Because her intelligence is too low, she couldn't become a mage. I think she took the job of an archpriest. Archpriest? Oh, that person yesterday, right? It should be her. She's indeed beautiful, but she said something about being a goddess. If only she wasn't an Axis cultist. If she didn't say such weird things, I would have invited her. She shouted out such weird things precisely because she's an Axis cultist. The adventurers started talking among themselves after hearing the receptionist. What was that about? Was it about that archpriest? Anyway, if she became an archpriest, she wouldn't be an obstacle to my goal of becoming the most powerful archwizard. So whatever. More importantly. You. Are you free? Do you have adventuring companions in this town? Hey, wait. That's not fair. I was here first. My party has two members with advanced jobs. How about it? 
Hearing my conversation with the receptionist, the other adventurers rushed over to invite me. Part 4 At a corner of the tavern, I listened to a guy and a girl introduce themselves. I'm the fighter, Rise. This is the thief, Reiner. Pleased to meet you. I'm Megumin. Pleased to meet you. Is that your real name? X2. It is my real name. If you have any problems about my name, let's hear it. N no. No problems whatsoever. Right, she's a crimson demon after all. Ah, uh, uh, I feel it's a nice name. They said in a panic. I chose to join this party of two siblings. An adventuring party is normally composed of four to six members. I joined this party because a smaller party meant a larger share of the reward. I currently only have the cash reward from the caravan, so I must make some money. Somewhat concerned, I looked over to the other table and noticed Union looking around suspiciously. She raised her hand and whispered ah, uh, but nobody heard her in the din. This was a good opportunity for Union to improve her social skills, so I shouldn't intervene. Let her resolve it herself. What is it? Is there another adventurer you want? There are only three of us including yourself, so it's okay to recruit more members. No, it's nothing. Let's find a subjugation quest to test our compatibility. This would be like a probation period. They didn't have any objections. In the distance, after being lost for a while, Union took some paper from the receptionist and started writing something. It seemed she gave up on asking for an invite and decided to make her own notice to recruit members. There's a subjugation quest for squirrels. Megumin, how about this? The squirrels must have fattened in this season. They should be delicious. What is a squirrel? They said it was delicious when it became fat, so it must be an edible monster. Now is a good season to work up an appetite. It was the season for chestnuts. This monster's name was tempting. Let's do it then. As this was my first quest, I nodded my head excitedly. Part 5 Squirrel It is a creature that loves to eat chestnuts, and its meat is tender and tasty. About the size of a dog, the squirrels would agilely invade the agricultural regions of the town and ruin the farmer's harvests. Megumin, Megumin. A lot of them are coming. They're heading our way. Please wipe them out with magic. Reiner, support Megumin. Don't let the squirrels get close to her. Oni-chan, be careful. One just appeared from the shadows. Uck. That was close. A metallic noise rang out from Rai's shield. He used the shield to block the squirrel's attack. Leave it to me. I can clear them all with one hit. Just give me some time. Are you sure? There are more than twenty of them. Anyway, please hurry. Oni-chan, in front. In front of you. Reiner shouted as she slashed at the squirrels. Rise raised his shield hurriedly. A metallic sound rang out once more. The squirrel's barb scrapped against the shield. Despite having a cute name like squirrel, these monsters have barbs covering their bodies. A person without metal armor would be heavily injured if subjected to such attacks. Reiner tossed her daggers at the squirrels, while Rise forced himself to take the blows. With no margin for failure, sweat flowed down my nervous face. I completed my magic incantation, raised my staff, and shouted at them. Both of you, pull back from the enemies. I'm going to blast the center of the monster mob. Understood. X2. Both of them pulled back from the squirrels. At the same time, I chanted. Explosion. A beam of light shone from the tip of the staff straight into the mob of squirrels. The target glowed white as light and heat expanded with the magic. An explosion rang out in the agricultural district, and my magic mercilessly blew away all the squirrels. The power of the explosion did not stop there. Even the chestnut trees, which the squirrels fed on, were uprooted. Rise and Reiner were rolling on the ground. The two of them were shouting pitifully and I too was blown off my feet by the shockwave. I enjoyed the sense of accomplishment of having cleared so many monsters in one move. But next time, I should take better note of the area that my shockwave would affect. Ah. W.H. what? What is this? 
Rhino and Rai stood up and cried out upon seeing the surroundings. Ha! Once I make my move, the squirrel's fates are as you can see. That magic just now is my finishing move, the ultimate offensive magic, explosion magic. X explosion magic. The explosion magic that can't be used even after learning it due to consuming a vast amount of mana. I heard it was a useless spell, but how is this useless? This has completely changed the terrain. Clearing so many squirrels in one attack. S so powerful. They sighed as I indulged in self-satisfaction. Then Rise said. Let's move on to another location. Also, can you use other magic besides explosion? The bounty for squirrels is quite low, so selling squirrel meat is the main source of income. That's right. And even the chestnut trees were uprooted. I don't know how much we will have to compensate for that. But if we can hunt one hundred or so squirrels, it would be enough. By the way. Rhino bended over next to me. How long are you going to lie there? Are you hurt after being blown away by the shockwave? She asked worriedly. No. I merely cannot move due to exhausting my mana. And with that, I cannot use any more magic today. Rise said as he looked at Komiusuk, who moved its face to my nose and sniffed. Is it that exhausting? Then, starting from tomorrow, let's seal this spell. Use other spells for now. Save explosion for emergency situations. That's right. Just use intermediate or advanced magic. I replied to both of them. Can't use. Question mark can't use what? Ah. Can't use advanced magic, right? It's fine if it's intermediate magic. No. Can't use anything other than explosion magic. I only learnt explosion magic. X2. Both of them were silent for a while. Then Rise said slowly. Then. That is the only spell you know? Yes. In other words, you can only use magic once per day? Yes. Both of them were speechless. Dot we need to discuss this. Please wait. X2. A. They said and left me there on the ground. Laying there, I couldn't hear what they were discussing. After a while, they returned. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's see, how should I say this? I feel that a rookie party like ours is unable to provide you with the opportunity for action. Yes. With powerful magic like explosion, it would be a waste for you to stay in our party. They humbly said. I don't mind as long as there's a chance. Compensating for each other's weakness is the point of being in a party. But Rise hurriedly shook his head as he heard that. No, no, no. We are just a rookie duo. We were getting too ahead in ourselves in trying to recruit a crimson demon archwizard. Yes, yes. And, you see, neither of us have advanced jobs. So in terms of compatibility and balance. Yes. If that was how it was, it couldn't be helped. We would make a loss due to the chestnut trees being blown off this time, but we will pay for it. That's right, so we will work hard to become stronger, until we are worthy of Megumin. At that time, we will reconsider this, okay? They spoke hurriedly as they carried me back to the guild. Part 6 This was difficult. I felt bad about letting someone I just met pay for the damaged trees caused by my explosion, so I paid the compensation myself. I ran out of money so quickly. I dragged my exhausted body and collapsed on the table as the lonely Union distractedly ate her meal. 10. E. XLN. XNJ. Nobody came while I was out questing? When my magic power recovered slightly, I became curious and went to look for Union's ad on the notice board. Recruiting party members. Must be gentle and willing to patiently listen to boring chatter. Must not mock people with weird names. Must be able to stay together even on days with no quests. Must be a frontline fighter. Preferably close to my age. I'm a thirteen-year-old archwizard. Is this a notice for recruiting a friend, boyfriend, or what? I felt that nobody would come if the recruitment wasn't done in a more relaxed manner. There were many things to complain about, but it was taking all my effort just to settle my own affairs. That's right. 
I didn't want to think about it, but could it be that I was being kicked out of the party earlier? They said their abilities were too low for me, but that could be a convenient excuse to kick me out. As I was pondering in silence. Hey, newbie. You don't even know what a mackerel pike is? How have you been living your life so far? No. I know what a mackerel pike is. It's a kind of fish, right? It's meant for the roasted salt mackerel pike set on the menu, right? The tavern owner in the guild was arguing with a youth with brown hair. It was the guy I saw through the carriage window when I first arrived in the town. His clothes were strange, so I remembered him well. I didn't see him this morning, so he must have just started working here. Right. It's that mackerel pike. A fish. Very active and covered in scales. In this season, it fattens and is especially tasty. I know. I'm very clear about that. I'm sorry. Can you repeat your instructions? Go to the field behind the guild and catch two mackerel pikes. Are you making fun of me? The youth threw his apron at the tavern owner angrily. This was the archetypal, easily angered spoiled brat. What was so revolting about a simple job like catching mackerel pikes in the field? A blue-haired waitress walked by the brown-haired youth, who was arguing with the tavern owner. Somehow, she was carrying an impossibly large number of beer mugs with both hands. I remember that she was with the brown-haired youth. She must have starting working here today, like that youth. Sorry for the wait. Oh. I've been waiting for this. Huh? W.H. what? This is plain water. Hey, you think I'm stupid? Newbie. What is the meaning of this? You've been serving plain water to the customers since the beginning. Where did the wine go? Were you drinking it on the sly? The tavern owner turned from the youth to scold the waitress. And no. I merely touched the wine with my finger. Listen. This is the way my body is. Actually, I'm the goddess of water. Hey, uncle, listen to me. Don't take me for a fool just because I'm new to this town. How can you do this to a neat who is now seriously working? What is this? Workplace bullying? Did you give out nonsensical instructions to get satisfaction out of my confusion? A girl who was complaining and a guy who was making false accusations. Faced with these two, the tavern owner's vein popped on his forehead. Damn it! What you're saying makes no sense. You are both fired. Fired. Hearing this, the guy finally grappled with the tavern owner, while the girl cried out loud without regard for the public. Well, at least I'm still doing better than those two. Feeling a bit more confident, I decided to return to the hotel today. On the way back to the hotel with Ioneon. Megumin, how was it today? Did you find a good party? No. We did a quest. But they said it would be a waste for me to be in their party. Is that so? Well, your magic is very powerful, so you must find a proper place to use it. Ioneon said and looked around, as if she was concerned about the situation in this new town. Ioneon, I saw your recruitment notice. Did anyone come? Yes. Someone came. But it was an uncle about my father's age, who said, I heard you're thirteen? Uncle. No, I'm thirteen too. You're looking for a frontline fighter, right? Leave it to unk me. I'm a high-level crusader. I will protect you, milady. You rejected him, right? Of course you rejected, right? I I rejected in the end. But that person chatted with me for a long time and treated me to lunch. I feel like he's a nice person. He said he will come and chat again tomorrow. Ignore that person if he approaches you tomorrow. And rewrite your recruitment notice. Ah? Uh? I I don't feel like I wrote anything wrong. Part 7 The Second Day Welcome. Ah, adventurers, right? There are some precautionary matters today. You can get the details from the receptionist. The waitress on a san said to me as I arrived at the guild. Precautionary matters? I warily went over to the reception area. The receptionist was currently explaining to other adventurers. There is a report that devils have been sighted in the forest. According to the report, 
they probably aren't low-level devils like gremlins. Devils often have high intelligence and can use magic, so they are powerful enemies. This matter is currently under investigation, so for the time being, please refrain from accepting quests in the forest unless you are really confident in your capabilities. After this, adventurers everywhere sighed. A lot of quests with good rewards were related to the forest. Rookie adventurers began with hunting giant frogs to increase their levels. Once their levels are high enough to handle the frogs, they would usually enter the forest. Hearing the notice, I walked towards the notice board for recruiting party members. As a thank you gift, the caravan leader paid for our hotel rooms for two weeks. After that, the hotel will kick me out, so I hope to find a party and secure my income before then. I'll find a party which is looking for members today. I mumbled softly as I examined the notices. The first notice seemed like a new one written by Eonion. Recruiting party members. Hopefully, someone who doesn't mind when the conversation stalls. Someone who wouldn't avoid me even if I visit every day. Someone who won't get angry even if our eyes do not meet. No restrictions on job and age. She compromised on the job and age requirements. I felt that what she compromised on was somewhat odd. I looked at Eonion who was once again sitting in a corner of the tavern and waiting for people to come. Eonion was playing a combat board game that she brought along for the trip. Her sad demeanor made me uncomfortable and want to talk to her, but it was probably better for her to improve herself. I continued to examine the recruitment notices on the notice board. There were all sorts of notices. Recruiting mage and priest. The three current members are swordmaster, lancer, and thief. Our goal is to defeat the Demon King. Rookies are welcome, as long as you are enthusiastic. Will you not join us and help save the world? From heroic sounding notices. Recruiting party members. The two current members are Crusader and Thief. Requires kinky trash, one frontline fighter and two rearguard supports. Looking for decent people with sound judgment. To recruitments with something blotted out. The former portion's handwriting was different from that of the latter portion. What was originally written in the part that was blotted out? After being puzzled for quite some time, I noticed a decent one. Recruiting party member. We are currently a party of four. Two vanguards, a priest from the Eris Church, and an archer. Mages only. Not a bad party. I went for an interview with the party that posted the recruitment. I see. Megumin, is it? That's a crimson demon name indeed. I'm the party leader, Ein. I have great expectations for you. He said. With a sword by his waist, the man looked like a warrior. The others included a person with a lance, a priest wearing an Eris church pendant, and a person with a longbow on his back. They looked at me with critical eyes. They were all males, averaging around level twelve. That is almost the level to graduate from being a rookie adventurer. Pleased to meet you. Then, should we take on a quest to gauge each other's abilities? Yes. Let's go into the forest. There are eyewitness reports of devils, but we shouldn't have a problem with a crimson demon mage. Any problem with this? No problem. I don't care if it's a devil or anything else, I will kill it in one hit. Hearing my self-confident reply, the party members smiled. Part 8. In the wide forest near the town, Ein roared loudly. There are too few. Jack, Thomas, and Megumin, back off. Rhodes, come with me to crush them. The accepted quest was to kill the slimes which appeared in large numbers in the forest. Slime monsters are not scary when they're small, but if they ate enough and grew, they could become difficult monsters that even first-class adventurers could not defeat. It is a creature with strong resistance against physical attacks and could continue moving as long as the core within its body wasn't destroyed. Ein, weapons are not very effective against them. Megumin, can you use magic to clear them off? Rhodes shouted as he pierced a nearby slime with his lance. Sorry. In this situation, everyone will be dragged into the magic effect. I could do something if we were in an open space. I is that so? It can't be helped then. Hey, Rhodes, let's go. Damn it, guess we are doing this the old-fashioned way, then. As rear support, 
we could do nothing except watch the frontline fighters drive off the slimes. Finally, they returned, panting and covered with burn wounds. The priest Thomas ran over to heal them. We were lucky the slimes weren't that big. Megumin, how was it? Are Rhodes and I of acceptable standards? Of course. Both of you are really cool. Next time, let me show you my real strength. Hearing this, Ayn and Rhodes said shyly that they had great expectations and turned their backs to leave. Why are there blood stink flying squirrels here? Don't they dwell deeper in the forest? We can't reach them. Jack, Megumin. Use your bow and magic to hit them. We were ambushed by a large group of flying squirrels as we trekked deeper into the forest. Both Ayn and Rhodes used their weapons to intimidate the flying squirrels from getting too close. So sorry. If the flying squirrels congregate in low altitude, the spell will explode next to us. You must be joking. Isn't there some smaller scale spell? Damn, Jack. Think of something. Ununderstood. Leave it to me. Jack repeatedly shot to land the flying squirrels which were circling around. To protect Komiu Suk from getting hurt, I hugged it closely, making sure not to get in the way and lowering my head. At this time, some sort of liquid dropped onto my hat. What was that? There weren't any dark clouds in the sky, so it couldn't be rain. At this time, Ayn raised his shield overhead, and shouted. Blood stink flying squirrels mark their targets with their pee. If you get drenched with it, the strong stink can't be removed for a week. I knew I couldn't do it, but I still attempted to hit the blood stink flying squirrels by swinging my staff in rage. Hey, Megumin, what are you doing? Keep your head down. Don't get in my way. I won't stop until these flying squirrels are exterminated. As Thomas grabbed both my arms, most of the blood stink flying squirrels were finally defeated. The surviving few realized their disadvantage and escaped. My important hat is ruined. I just have to wash it and leave it in the hotel for the stink to dissipate. During the rest after defeating the flying squirrels, I stared hatefully at the stinking hat in my hands. Rhodes came over to the tree stump on which I was sitting. Hey. I want to ask. Under what conditions are you able to use magic? Yo, you are asking about conditions. I guess as long as the enemies are far away in an open space, with no one else in range of its effect. Since I couldn't do anything in the previous two battles, Rhodes probably felt I was unreliable. I see. Then it was a mistake to enter the forest. Today, we will let you witness our abilities. Tomorrow, we will hunt on the plains instead. Ein said as he listened on the side and stood up. I felt apologetic and embarrassed. At this moment, the trees rustled as if something was coming our way. Slime? Is it attracted by the scent of blood of the flying squirrels? Good timing. Now we can complete our quest. What came forth was indeed a slime, but... It's huge. X4. That slime was as large as a storehouse. Hey, this is bad. We can't handle one this size. Retreat. Boo but are we leaving it to grow further? If we don't destroy it now, it would really become unstoppable. There are flying squirrel corpses everywhere, so there is no lack of food. Ayn and Rhodes panicked. Jack and Thomas stood in a daze. I tersely said to the four of them. Please keep your distance from the slime. Hearing me, all four of them turned around. W.H. what? You intend to use magic? It's better to run away now. The four of them said to me as they moved away from the giant slime. The slime started to engulf and consume the flying squirrel corpses. Perhaps because there was tasty food, the slime couldn't be bothered with us. The four people moved behind me as I started the incantation. I say, don't slimes have high resistance against magic? Small ones are manageable, but even a crimson demon couldn't handle a slime of that size, right? Shh. Shut up. This is a good chance to witness the rookie's ability. It's fine even if she can't defeat it. If she can damage a slime of that size, then she is definitely worthy of being in our party. Ayn's and Rhodes' voices came from behind me. Let's give up on the reward this time. Compared to this, 
The slime is too big. It's fine if we just report it to the guild immediately. Jack said as he prepared to run away. The priest Thomas was puzzled as he listened to my incantation. What is it, Thomas? Is there a problem with the rookie's magic? Oh. There's static electricity around Megumin. Ah. Is this lightning magic? Unlike Thomas, Iron and Rhodes became interested and said without panic. As the only magic user besides me, Thomas realized that the upcoming magic was of an abnormal scale. The other three saw Thomas's face pale, and turned to look at me. Hey, Megumin. There's no need to defeat the slime here. There is no adventurer in this town that can defeat a slime of that size. If we report it to the guild, they will summon more powerful adventurers from other cities. S. Say, is there something bad happening? The atmosphere feels like it's quivering. Ayn and Rhodes uneasily said. As I continued the incantation, I pointed my staff at the slime, which was still consuming the flying squirrel corpses. Wah, wait. This feels really bad. Hey, back off further. A. Hey. What are you saying, Thomas? We're already so far away. No matter what, this distance should be. As Rhodes said that, the incantation for explosion magic was finished. Everyone, please lower your heads. A mere slime will be blasted into oblivion by my shawkill magic. The four of them heard this and dropped to the ground. Explosion. As a beam of light flashed from the staff tip and penetrated into the slime's body, the huge body expanded. Following a blinding flash, the explosive wind knocked down all the surrounding trees. All the birds in the forest flew off because of the explosive noise, and the shockwave shook the entire forest. As the smoke cleared, the huge slime was gone. Including me, the five of us were prone on the ground. I should stand a little further back next time. Part 9 In the Tavern of the Guild After exhausting my mana, I collapsed on the table. Ayn and the rest started drinking beer in high spirits. Ah! You are truly a crimson demon. So admirable. That scene was so awesome. I was trembling after seeing the ruin left in the wake of that spell. Unbelievable. To think that magic-resistant slime was defeated in one hit. The three of them repeatedly praised me. At this time, Rhodes came over with a drink. Ah, uh, how should I say this? Sorry. I thought you were just bluffing about being a mage. My apologies. I lifted and shook my head at Rhodes, who lowered his head and handed over some fruit juice. No. There is something I should say, so if you want to apologize, do it later. Hearing this, the four of them wore puzzled expressions. Actually, I can only use that explosion spell that I used earlier. In other words, I can only exert all my power to use that spell once per day. I'm confident that I can be a trump card against powerful enemies, but will this party be fighting such powerful enemies every day? Hearing this, I'm quietly swallowed his saliva. You can't use other magic? Like, intermediate magic, for example. Nope. It's fine if you can't use it now. We can help you to gain levels, then you can learn intermediate magic. I don't intend to learn any skill that does not boost explosion magic. X4. Receiving my immediate response, the four of them finally became silent. Ah. Uh, our party members feel that it is sufficient to earn some money by fighting weak monsters. As of now, we have no plans to challenge powerful monsters. I'm sorry. Can you find another party? After receiving today's reward and saying goodbye to them, I dragged my tired body along, my mind troubled. Could it be that I was not a genius after all? Am I a kid who nobody wanted? No. There's no need to panic just yet. I've only been in the town for three days. I drank the drink given by Rhodes and recovered my wits. I searched for Ionion, who should be searching for party members like me. She was still in the same seat as this morning, playing a board game by herself. I walked over to Ionion and tapped her shoulder from behind. He hello? Welcome. My name is Ionion. My job is Archwizard, but I can use only intermediate magic. Ionion quickly said as she turned around. Upon seeing me, a disappointed look came over her face. 
What's with this attitude? I came over because you were so pitiful playing alone in the corner of the tavern. I thought no adventurer would come over after seeing her notice. I sat opposite of Ioneon and rearranged the pieces on the game board. Ah, wait. Really. I was halfway through my game. Ioneon complained, but she smiled happily. We played the board game as we chatted. Megumin, have you found some party members? No. I went along with a party for a quest today, but they couldn't utilize me properly. Is that so? As for me, there was only an uncle who drank beer early in the morning. He said, I'm a non-combatant. If that's okay, I will join. I considered it for a while, but I felt that it would be pointless if it wasn't an adventurer's party. So I declined. Checkmate. No. Just reject it without considering. Why do you always attract such uncles? I'm really worried. Even if they try to pick you up, don't follow them blindly. Teleport. I won't follow them. I'm not Megumin who would be hooked by a meal. Okay, your turn. I won't be hooked by a mere meal. You wait and see. A few days from now, I'll be fighting some fierce criminals. In the corner of the noisy tavern, we grumbled to each other as we moved the game pieces about. Upon seeing our crimson eyes, adventurers should be rushing over to invite us to their parties. This is truly the city of rookie adventurers. Don't they know anything about the Crimson Demons? Maybe existing parties don't lack mages. But the school taught us that mages and priests are fairly rare. Maybe we are being avoided because of our age. Checkmate. Uck. If I retreat here, that swordmaster would rush forward. This square is within the shooting range of that archer. So teleport there. There aren't many mages in the town, so there should be some demand for us. There were some people who avoided our gazes after seeing our crimson eyes. But none of them came to talk. Was it really as Union said? Were we being avoided because we were too young? Although teleport is very annoying, this is the end for you. You were careless just because the adventurer is the weakest game piece. Level this adventurer piece to become a swordmaster. Good, now the die is cast. Explosion. Ah. I used the special skill of the archwizard piece to flip the board over and sigh deeply. Could I find companions tomorrow? Megumin, another game. Let's play another game. The rule said explosion can only be used once per day, so I will win in the next game. Hey, where are you going? Don't run off after winning. Part 10 I thought about today's events as I made my way back to the hotel. Today, I experienced my second party. Is a mage who could only use explosion magic really that undesirable? No, no, no. A party that specializes in hunting weak monsters really would not require such a mage, but if it was an elite adventurer, or... Right. For a party that specializes in high reward quests, or a party that fights in the front line to defeat the demon king, I must be necessary. There must be some of them in this town. Adventurers who aim to defeat the demon king. As I thought about this and dragged my tired body along the street, I heard an imposing cry. Don't miss out on this. Come and take your pick of fresh bananas, just caught from the river. Only three hundred eris. Only three hundred eris. Want some? Get some, eh? Hey, what did you just say? Did you say these bananas were caught from the river? In front of the fruit store were a brown-haired guy and a blue-haired girl who was holding a fan. I seem to run into them quite often. Come and see. Now only three hundred eris. Two bunches for six hundred eris, that's what it should be, but listen. Two bunches should be six hundred eris, but there is a special discount now. Only five hundred eris. It's a very good deal. It is a great offer, hey, did you say earlier that the bananas were caught from the river? It seemed this duo that was fired from the tavern was starting a new job selling things. As if excited by the gathering crowd, the blue-haired girl raised her voice and knocked the table with her fan. Good. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Next, I'll make these bananas vanish. Hey, hey. Can you really do that? There are so many people here. What are you going to do if you fail? I was interested in the blue-haired girl's words, so I stayed and watched. 
There are no secret devices and no tricks. I will merely cover the bananas with this cloth. Then chant vanish. Vanish, vanish. Okay, look. Oh, X4. I cried out in surprise along with the watching crowd. Awesome. What is with that girl? I have never seen such a good performer. Hey, I will buy one. One bunch of bananas. Ah, I want to buy two. Me too. I want two bunches. The audience changed into customers and rushed to the blue-haired girl. Nice job. Hey, if this carries on, this'll be so easy. Okay, bring out the vanished bananas. We'll have a great sale. The brown-haired guy said happily, but the blue-haired girl showed a puzzled expression. What are you saying? The bananas have vanished, so they aren't here anymore. Okay, bring out some new bananas to sell. Ah? No, I don't understand what you mean. What do you mean by vanish? How can the bananas just vanish? Hey, where did you hide it? Stop joking and take them out already. I'm not joking. I said there are neither secret devices nor tricks. Hurry up and bring out the bananas for sale and for the vanishing performance. Stop fooling with me. It's already afternoon, so stop dreaming. Before the customers, both of them were tapped on the shoulders from behind. The fruit store owner was standing there with a hard expression. Fired. Why? Hey, please wait. It has nothing to do with me. She's the one who made the bananas vanish. The blue-haired girl cried in grievance, while the brown-haired guy tried his best to explain. After seeing that farce, I felt silly being troubled, so I turned my back on them and returned to the hotel. Interlude, Scene 1 A lonely girl who was looking for companions. I sat in the corner of the Adventurer's Guild, and repeatedly looked at the party recruitment notice board with a sense of unease. Megumin, my fry. Rival, who's traveled with me so far, has found a party and left to do a quest. On our first day as adventurers, our distance had widened. Although Megumin was petty, bad-tempered, and had a weird perception, she still had considerable social skills. After living so long, the thing I've talked to the most was the Marimo reared at home. TL Note, Marimo is a kind of green algae ball found in lakes. It was too difficult to talk to strangers. I simply couldn't do it. Therefore, I posted a notice at the party recruitment notice board. Exclamation mark I see it. Someone just looked at my notice. Looking in the direction of the notice board, I saw a small adventurer's party reading my notice. Maybe these people would accept me as a companion. How should I greet them? I'm so stupid. I never thought of how to greet them until now. I should keep to the order of name, job, and skill. As I was getting hot-blooded, those people pointed at the notice and nodded. They looked around happily, as if looking for someone. Meeting my eyes, they trembled. Finally, this small party shrank and left hurriedly. It seemed they were not recruiting. But no problem. The notice clearly stated the job of Archwizard. If I waited, surely some adventurers did not come at all. Some other people read the notice later, but for some reason, they left without saying anything after seeing me. At this time, an one san with spectacles came over to my table. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, excuse me. Ah, uh, yes. What is it? My name is Yunion. My job is Archwizard, but I can only use intermediate magic. Sorry, but no problem. I can learn advanced magic soon. No, no. I'm a staff of the Adventurer's Guild. Sorry, I didn't come over because of the recruitment notice. She seemed to be a guild staff. Uh, did something happen? Was there a problem with my recruitment notice? No. Although I do think there's a problem with the way it was written. A lot of people complain that whenever they read the notices, a girl will stare really hard at them. They felt it was very scary. It was a misunderstanding. It was because I was very concerned. I know that very few adventurers are considered worthy of a crimson demon, but please don't glare with your crimson eyes at those that don't meet your criteria. It's somewhat scary. Wrong. A crimson demon's eyes would glow crimson only when excited. 
I was excited because there was someone coming. So sorry. I will take note of it. Hearing my reply, the staff breathed a sigh of relief and left. People were afraid of me. I was kind of hurt. As I laid my head on the table slightly dejectedly. I heard you're thirteen years old? I raised my head and looked. Uncle. No, I'm thirteen years old too. You're looking for a frontline job? Leave it to Unc, me. I'm a high-level crusader. I will protect you, my little sister. No matter how I looked at him, he seemed to be over forty years old. The heavily armored uncle panted and said quickly. Ah, uh, ah, uh, let's chat. A. Even though he was the one who initiated the conversation, the uncle cried out in surprise. Chapter 2 Explosive Weirdo and the Forest Devil Part 1 In the endless plains outside the town. It is said that mob monsters like giant frogs lived there. But they never came to the town, probably because of the heavily armed guards. In front of the main gate of Axel Town. Explosion. Hey! Wait, what are you doing? The guard uncle ran over to me as I unleashed explosion magic. Hey, little girl, what are you? I was going to ask why did you suddenly used magic, but why you collapsed on the ground? What happened? Hang in there. The guard carried me back after I collapsed due to mana exhaustion. I raised my head. P.L. pleased to meet you. I'm Megumin, a crimson demon who recently moved to this town. I think these explosions will happen frequently from now on. Please excuse me. Spare me. At least limit your magic use to when there are monsters around. Don't use magic for no reason. Hearing me, the guard cried out in despair. I dragged my tired body along and staggered into the town with Komiyosuke. After using explosion magic to vent my frustrations, I thought and mumbled to myself. There were no recruitment notices today either. What happened? Do the adventurers in the town no longer need mages? I had been in this town for over a week. Recently, there were no recruitment notices for mages on the notice board of the Adventurers Guild. There was only Union's notice, which nobody could tell if it was a notice to recruit adventuring companions or friends. Mages are usually rarer than other jobs. I didn't think that demand would dry up so quickly. After venting my frustrations, I returned to the Adventurers Guild. Noon is the time when adventurers usually work. At such a time, I once again laid my head on the table in the Adventurers Guild. What should I do? I whispered and sighed deeply. This week, I repeatedly asked to join other parties for quests, but... No matter which party they are, they all express disinterest after completing the quest. There has been no intention to recruit me. It seemed they were not interested in a mage who can use only explosion magic. I was being treated as an unwanted person. Me. The genius me. Ah. Hey. What's wrong, Megumin? Don't shout so suddenly. I have a challenging task right now. Eonion who was playing at the same desk, complained as I hugged my head and shouted. She was in the same situation as me, since she had not found any party members. With a serious look on her face, Yeonion carefully stacked poker cards on the table into a pyramid. Recently, her ability to play by herself had been improving. Perhaps because she was concentrating so hard on this, other people had reservations about approaching us. I picked up Komiyosuke, who was by my feet, and put it on the table. Then, it took an interest in the poker card that Eonium was shakily holding between her fingers. It walked over to the card pyramid. Meow. Ah. The fierce black beast, with its unfettered appetite for destruction, easily destroyed Eonium's work. It was done by a cat, so there's nothing that can be done. Komiusuk looked happy after the destruction of the card pyramid. I ruffled Komiusuk's head as a reward. What should I do now? Forget that. Apologize to me first. I didn't know what to do, so I just ignored the grumbling Eonion. Part 2 By the way, Megumin. Have you heard? Someone offered a reward for defeating the devil in the forest. I was running out of money, 
so such news couldn't be ignored. Oh? Tell me about it. I heard that most of the monsters which used to inhabit the forest have been exterminated. Since then, monsters mostly dwell in the deeper parts of the forest and seldom come close to town. But for some reason, the monsters that live in the deep forest are recently appearing around town. Therefore, the profitable monsters in the forest have attracted attention. There is a rumor that the devil is responsible for driving the other monsters close to town. The monsters from the deep forest were coming close to town? I remembered that there was a similar incident in the Crimson Demon Village. I thought of the devil Arnis who drove monsters to attack the caravan during our trip. Was it that female devil again? I did not think Arnis could survive my explosion magic, but... I thought this matter had nothing to do with me, but I had a bad feeling about this. Ionion, that devil. What does it look like? I wanted to confirm its appearance. At this moment. Oh, you even brought along two cute girls. You're just a rookie, so why are you starting a harem? I'm so envious. Give one to me. A crude, boorish voice resounded in the guild. Hey, what are you doing? Don't pester me, you damn drunk. This was answered by some girls. I looked at Ionion as she sneakily glanced at the people who were arguing. No. Ionion, don't meet eyes with those kinds of people, or we'll get dragged into it. Wa well, wait, Megumin. This isn't right. Don't you want to help them? Ionion complained to me, but this is the Adventurer's Guild. Most adventurers are rowdy, so this was normal behavior. The ones who were being pestered were rookies. This is a form of baptism for adventurers. Yet. Give it up. I'm not a rookie. Despite my looks, I'm a very famous adventurer. I'm only here to recruit a priest. It doesn't look like there are any priests in the guild, so I guess I'll return to the hotel for today. A deep voice was heard saying. What? Famous adventurer? I don't recognize you. I'm a famous adventurer in this town. You mean infamous? Let it go. He probably has the advanced job of swordmaster. And his sword might be magical. I can sense powerful magic coming from it. The one who said this was probably his fellow crony. The girl's advice reached our ears, but... So annoying. Shut up. I don't care about any magic sword. I'm not afraid of such things. Come, humor me. You're a famous adventurer, right? Then practice swordplay with me. It can't be helped then. Let's go outside. Both of you go and rest. I understand. Then we'll be leaving. Finish that thug off. He looks despicable. Don't be careless, okay? They seem to be of one mind. The people in the guild looked on as the source of the disturbance went outside. Since it was an interesting development, I peeked in that direction too. Hey, Megumin. Didn't you say that we shouldn't meet eyes with those kinds of people? Ionion called out softly to interrupt my peeking. Nobody would want to miss out on such an interesting development. Let me look. In no way. In my eyes, the pesky one will lose. That thug will get beaten instantly and return. If your eyes meet at that time. Bass bastard. What was that? That cheater. Why is he both handsome and strong? Hey, what are you people looking at? Stop looking. He truly returned instantly. It seemed he was defeated the moment he left the guild. That's why I told you to stop. I know what your personality is like, so I won't tell you not to bother people. But you should check your target out before picking on him. I I know. Next time, I will find someone weaker. Why can't there be a weakling with a lot of pretty girls? I didn't want to meet eyes with a thug who spoke such boorish words. To avoid getting involved, we left the Adventurer's Guild. Part 3 The Second Day Explosion You again? The guard roared in a voice that matched the intensity of the noise generated by the explosion. Following yesterday, I came to use explosion magic again, but... I told you yesterday not to use magic without reason. By the way, recently... Several huge craters have suddenly appeared near town. 
Those were made by you, right? It took a lot of manual labor to fill those holes. Boo but I did as you asked today. I used magic on a monster. I defeated a giant frog, so can you just let it slide? I collapsed on the ground and begged the guard, who was running towards me. The guard sighed and picked me up. I can easily defeat giant frogs and similar monsters. I can handle the monster that come approach the gate by myself. Little girl, can't you use this magic to defeat stronger monsters further away from the town? After using magic, I won't be able to move due to mana exhaustion. If I become immobile far away from the town, I will be eaten by other monsters that come to investigate. Little girl, you should find some companions. I wouldn't have so much trouble if I could do that. I said farewell to the guard uncle and dejectedly dragged my tired body back to the guild. I heard a familiar voice. No. I don't wanna. Why? Why must I move bricks? Find me a more suitable job. Even if you say that. This is the only simple job that gives daily wages. It can't be helped. Don't be willful. No. At least let me be a salesperson. Let me be a salesperson again. I have confidence that I can do it right this time. Where does your confidence come from? Seriously, I'm begging you. I don't want to do this either. I'd rather take on quests immediately, but we would die with our current equipment. Don't be picky and work here. There's been a shortage of manual laborers since they've been busy filling up holes in the plains near the town. Thanks to this, the wages are higher right now. Don't worry, you can do this easily. It was the strange duo that I kept running into. They were arguing outside the office for construction work. It seemed they were here because the wages were good due to a labor shortage. But the blue-haired girl wanted some other job, so she adamantly refused to enter. Good. It seemed I wasn't the only one who couldn't adjust to society and didn't know what to do. Don't say such stupid things. Who do you think I am? Dirty manual labor does not suit me. And shouldn't you be feeding me better food? It has been bread crusts every day. Why must I eat such foods every day? A noble existence like mine should watch what I eat. When we first met, you were eating snacks. Enough. How long are you going to throw a tantrum for? Let's go. I want to prepare my equipment and start adventuring. No. I don't want to move bricks. Why is a neat like you so enthusiastic? They were doing their best to make a living. I watched the girl being dragged away. I am seeking work and companions too, so I walked towards the Adventurers Guild. Part 4 Several adventurers suddenly stood up when they saw me enter the guild. As if they were afraid of something. Perhaps it was because I was a crimson demon. Or did I already possess the dignity of an adventurer? As I smiled happily at the thought, the adventurers who stood up went over to the notice board and tore down a recruitment notice. Dot. Excuse me. Ah, uh, yes? W.H. What's the matter? I spoke to the one who tore down the paper from the notice board. She was ridiculously afraid. On a san may I see the paper that you just tore down? I refuse. Let me see. I forcefully snatched the paper from the on san who was hiding it behind her back. Written on the paper was. Recruiting mage. My party consists of four members. No limit on magic type. Oh. No limit on magic type. How convenient. Actually, I'm a mage without a party. So so sorry. The spot has been taken, so the party is full now. That's why I tore down the paper. I seized the one san who was intending to flee after saying that. That excuse is too lame. What? Are you looking down on explosion magic? Is this a plot to ostracize me? N no. I don't look down on explosion magic. You see. There've been rumors of a crimson demon girl who can use explosion magic. Whenever she comes across a monster, she uses her magic without any regard for the surroundings. People are saying that she might be crazy. This is just picking a fight. Sick in the head? Let's see if you all can still be so garrulous after witnessing my magic, ah, uh, what? Let me go. We'll be troubled if you use magic in the guild. 
As I chanted the incantation despite being out of magic power, the guild staff and other adventurers stopped me and dragged me off further into the guild. Megumin Sam. This is not acceptable. Using advanced magic or higher inside the town is strictly forbidden. If you do this again, you will have to spend the night in the police station. If I ran out of money, it wouldn't be bad to go to jail. At the very least, I wouldn't have to worry about food and shelter. I was probably hopeless to think like this. After being severely lectured by the staff, I walked over to Ionian, who was enthusiastically playing alone. In no way. Do you think I'm a cheap woman who would blindly follow anyone? I didn't say that. I'm just begging you. Please. I'm not plotting anything. I just want to let my mother be at ease. Just pretend to be my lover for a while. My sick mother said she wanted to see her grandchild before she dies. If not, at least her daughter-in-law. I can only beg this from my only friend, Ionian. On only friend? No, even so, pretending to be a lover is too. I'm only thirteen years old. I'm not even an adult yet. Seeing her troubled face, the man said. No problem. Just a simple greeting will do. I don't intend to do anything, so there won't be any issue. No problem. Really? Why wait a moment? Why are you trying so hard? I should refuse. Please. I beg you, I beg you. Just one date. If convenient, one hour. No, thirty minutes would do. The man begged with a despairing voice. He was already on his knees to beg Union. No, this violates the original intent. Isn't it pretending to be lovers before your sick mother? Why is it a date now? I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. The man finally kneeled down. Wait. Please wait. Wait a bit. Please. 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 I beg you. Just for a bit. I'm begging you. Perhaps unable to turn him away, Ionion looked afraid and troubled. She said to the kneeling man. Uck. Th then, just for. A while. Really? Of course not. What are you up to? Exploiting another person's kindness. Want me to call the police? Wh what are you saying? Ah, oh. You are that crazy mage. Wait, spare me. Not the police. I understand. I will leave obediently. Seeing my sudden intrusion, the man hurriedly escaped. I chased him off and interrogated Union. What are you doing? You're getting tricked too easily. What are you going to do if you get kidnapped? Boo but, but. He said his sick mother needs to see his lover. That was definitely a lie. Did anyone else do this? Did anyone else ask you to do strange things when I was away? N nothing strange. The uncle who frequently drinks beer during the day requested, from now on, don't call me uncle. Call me daddy. That's already very strange. You refused, right? Or rather, don't ever talk to him again. The chief will cry if he finds out that his daughter is calling a stranger daddy in a faraway town. Seriously. Why was she so vulnerable? She's only been in this town for a week and already encountered such dangers. Ionion flashed a piece of paper before me. She stared and said. But it can't be helped. After spending so many days in this tavern, the only person to talk to me was an Axis cultist trying to convert believers. Why are you handing out pamphlets for that person? Throw it away. I crushed the Axis cult recruitment form in Ionion's hands and threw it away. This wouldn't do. If I left Union alone to force her to overcome her communicative barrier, her social inadequacy would just worsen beyond the point of redemption. But I was too busy trying to find adventuring companions. Oh, right. Ionion, how about it? Until we can find party members, do you want to form a temporary party with me? A. Hearing my invitation, Ionion was shocked for some reason. What? Was the invitation that strange? Boo but. I made my decision with such determination. It's only been a week since I said it. That. What was Ionian talking about? What? I merely asked if you want to form a party. 
Why are you troubled over it? Hearing this, Union's face twitched. Essay, Megumin. Do you still remember what I said last time? You think, that, once I learned advanced magic, we'll have another match. Oh. After defeating Arnis, you were mumbling something in the carriage. What was it again? I urged her to continue, but her eyes were getting more teary. You are asking me? Wait a moment. How can you so easily forget such an important promise? Megumin, you are always like this. What kind of crimson demon's top genius is this? You are just an idiot who can't remember important things. What did you say? It would be troublesome if both of you fight in the tavern. After receiving the second lecture of the day, Union and I were driven out of the guild. Part 5 Seriously. Why are you always like this? Don't you have any memory? Did your memories get blown off by your own explosion magic? You're at it again. We're outside now, so nobody will stop me even if I make a scene. W.H. what? Want to fight? Your mana has been exhausted. You can't even walk properly. Do you think you can win against me in your current state? On the road back to the hotel. We were still arguing. Seriously. It was my once-in-a-lifetime declaration, and you completely forgot about it. Unbelievable. Simply unbelievable. Ionion covered her face with her hands, and shook her head angrily. I know, I know. It's my fault for forgetting it. So, what is that important promise? Please tell me again. A. Ionion blushed upon hearing my casual statement. What do you mean by A? What is that important promise? I will listen carefully this time. Come, please say it out loud. I walked to the grass patch by the side of the road and sat up straight, making a serious pose to listen to her. Seeing my behavior, Ionion panicked even more. N no. No. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Forget it. Yes, forget it. It's nothing. I will say it next time. Hey. You just insulted me as an idiot, so what is this about? I don't know why you're so embarrassed, but spit it out now. I will seriously listen this time. Looking at my serious pose, Ionion was on the verge of tears. But she still made her resolve and opened her mouth to speak. Ah. Uh, once I've learned advanced magic, and am no longer a liability, I will. Excuse me, both of you. May I have a moment of your time? An old man wearing a tailcoat like a seneschal suddenly talked to us, interrupting Ionion. No. We are talking about something important. Go away. D don't be like this. I'm actually looking for someone. Hearing the uncle, Ionion and I shared a look. Actually, the lady of my household ran away from home because she didn't want to get married. I'm sorry to bother you, but please help me find her. In this country, Having beautiful blonde hair and blue eyes is a sign of noble bloodline. My lady has long blonde hair set behind her head. If you see someone like this, please inform the Dustiness family. We will reward you for the trouble. The old man said and bowed. The Dustiness family belonged to the high nobility that even the ignorant us knew about. The lady of that family running away from home was a major event. That lady must be a cute and pure girl. I imagined a dignified and delicate little girl. I wanted to see this noble lady and I was interested in the reward from a noble family. Leave it to me. If I find her, I will properly protect her. Thank you very much. I'll leave it to you. The old man said sharply and ran over to another passerby. Union, let's go. For us who lack money, protecting the lady is a great opportunity. Hey, hey. I'm not in need of money. I dragged Union along and ran. So tired. We didn't find the lady in the end. Uck. I was hoping to make some money from the Dustiness family. We went and searched through the town so many times. Where was the lady hiding? We searched everywhere in the town, but we didn't find any clues. We were very worried about how she was doing after she ran away from home. After all, she was a noble lady. If she ran away from home, she might be scared and hiding somewhere, not knowing what to do. 
I hoped she hadn't been kidnapped by some bad guys. I thought blonde hair with blue eyes would be rare, so it would be easy to find her, but... The only blonde person we met in the town was wearing heavy armor and saying dangerous things like there seems to be a devil in the forest. Let's kill it in the name of goddess Eris. Before rushing out of town with a silver-haired thief. In the end, after so much effort, we still couldn't find the cute noble lady. It can't be helped. It seems we can't depend on luck. Tomorrow, let's take on a quest together. We're still making a party? I already said, before I learn advanced magic. It took a lot of courage for me to say all that. Do you really not remember? Part 6 The next morning. We came to the Adventurers Guild early. Taking advantage of the absence of other adventurers, we checked out the various quests. I left Komiyusuk in the hotel because I thought Ionion and I wouldn't be able to protect it when we encounter monsters. Hey, Megumin. Let's do an easy quest first, okay? Ionion said and passed me the most basic request in this town, the quest to hunt giant frogs. I knew that the giant frogs, with their high reproductive rate, are one of the food sources that maintained the town. We could keep that in reserve. I roughly scanned the notice board. Clean the tomb of a mansion in the outskirts of the town, recruiting civil engineers to fill the craters in the plains, hunt the necromancer in the communal cemetery, find the lady who ran away from home, investigate the water quality of the lake. Because of the increased work of civil engineers, sandy waste was reported to be flowing into the lake, and so on. Hmm. Which one should we pick? Our party consisted of two mages. Should we choose a hunt quest that could capitalize on our powerful offensive power? Let's go to the forest, since recent rumors say it has been very profitable. A. Wasn't there a warning about a devil in the forest that warranted a bounty? We're just two people after all. Let's do something easy and go to the plains where there are a lot of weak monsters. What was she saying? I was aiming at the reward for defeating that devil. But I was worried that the cowardly Ionion would end up playing alone in the guild again. Oh well. Let's kill some mob monsters in the plains today and let her gain some self-confidence. Oh. The little girl has brought along her companion today. Good. I'm relieved that you have a companion. As long as it is far away from town, you can use your magic as you please. When we reached the town gates, the guard uncle said to me. It seemed he had already remembered my face. After leaving the town gate, Ionion said with shining eyes. Megumin. When were you so active that even the guards recognize you? I thought you were just strolling around randomly. H how rude. I don't have the same social ineptitude as you do. While you were playing alone by yourself, I have become very famous in this town. Even in the Adventurers Guild, there are many who recognize me. When did this happen? I ignored the surprised Yonion and walked around, searching for monsters on the plains. That's probably not a lie. Fireball. Yonion's magic killed the giant frogs congregating on the plains. It was nowhere near explosion magic, but it still made a considerable boom, charring the frogs nearby. I felt a bit hungry after smelling the fried frogs. Yonion. Did you bring some salt? You want to eat now? No. These frogs are meant to be sold to the guild. After deducting the cost of transporting the frogs, the net profit is 5,000 eris each. After killing five of them, there will be a quest completion reward, so this job is fairly profitable. Hearing Union's explanation, I looked at the charred frogs. There were three dead frogs near us. Selling them would get us 15,000 eris. If we killed another two more, there would be an additional 100,000 eris. I heard the guild staff mention that hunting frogs would make money quickly before. This is indeed profitable. It is very profitable, but... Okay. You should be confident now. Asked the guild to collect the dead frogs. Let's go to the forest. What? It's too early. Let's do another round. I admonished the shocked Eonion. It's really noticeable after fighting a bit. Truly, the magic of crimson demons like us is too powerful. Don't waste time with the mob monsters here. Let's find more powerful enemies. Besides, killing mob monsters isn't good for gaining levels. That's true. 
But Megumin, you're not doing anything. Ah, uh, I'm the only one who is fighting. We'll definitely encounter the devil if we enter the forest in such a condition. It's even better if we run into it. Think. I defeated Arnis, didn't I? Despite how she looked, Arnis was a greater devil. Compared to her, what is a wandering devil in the forest? Eonion can take on the mob monsters. If that devil appears, I will take care of it. How is that? Hearing my self-confident words, Eoni unsuspiciously looked at me. Is it really okay? Megumin usually screws up whenever she gets all confident like this. H how rude. Think about it. If we defeated that devil, we would be thanked by the other adventurers. Then, there would be plenty of parties inviting us to join them. I'll go. And so we decided to go. Part 7 We went deep into the dense green forest, with Ionion at the front. We hadn't encountered any monsters yet, so things were going smoothly. When I came to the forest not long ago, we were attacked by slimes and flying squirrels. Yet there is nothing today. Flying squirrels? There are flying squirrels in this forest? Flying squirrels sound rather cute. Ionion said calmly, ignorant of how scary they were. It seemed it would be good for her to be urinated upon once. Oh! Speak of the devil. There were some rustlings in the aftergrowth. I raised a warning. Ionion became alert, readying her staff and dagger. What appeared before us was. S so cute. Ionion muttered with shining eyes. The thing that appeared before us was about the size of a small dog. It was a rabbit with cute round eyes and fuzzy fur. But there was a horn on its forehead. Regardless of how cute it might be, a monster is still a monster. TL note, the horned rabbit is a monster in Arabic myths. Yonion, this is the monster the guild staff warned me to be very careful about. It's a one-hit rabbit, lovely rabbit. Don't be reckless just because it is cute. Kill it carefully. A. We're killing it? Ionion said on the verge of tears. Even if you look at me like that, it's still a monster. Since we were adventurers. Chew. The rabbit cried out before us. And tilted its head slightly. E even if it was this cute, a monster is still a monster. We must not be reckless. In a manner that was worrying, the one-hit rabbit staggered shakily over to Ionion's feet. S so cute. What should we do? Megumin. So cute. It's too cute. It must be a mistake to consider it a monster. After all, it's so cute. Get a hold of yourself. This is the monster the guild staff warned us about. And I'm very concerned about such a dangerous name like One Hit Rabbit. Don't be. As I spoke, the One Hit Rabbit stared at me with its wet red eyes. Chew? It tilted its head as if saying, Won't you pet me? I wanted to pet it. I wanted to hug it tightly and pet it. Come. I have some veggie sticks. Here, bunny bunny. Eonion had already fallen. She left some veggie sticks on the ground. Those were probably her afternoon snacks. That's not fair. I also want to. Feed it, as I was about to say that. The rabbit ignored the veggie stick and continued to stagger towards Eonion. There were rustlings in the aftergrowth from which the rabbit appeared. X2. We shared a look and extended our heads over the aftergrowth for a look. White rabbits were surrounding a huge thing. What were the rabbits doing there? Upon a closer look, we realized what they were doing. A huge gray wolf was lying there. It was dead, with a huge hole in its body. And the rabbits were surrounding it. The hole was probably caused by the sharp horn. In other words. Carnivores? X2. We cried out in shock. The rabbits turned towards us. I took a glance at the rabbit that was still creeping towards us and got down into a prone position. In a moment, something white flashed past above my head. At the same time, I heard something strike the tree. I looked back in trepidation and saw the rabbit struggling as its horn pierced my hat and the tree. I ran over to the struggling rabbit and broke its neck. I pulled the unmoving rabbit off the tree and recovered my hat. 
Ionian, these monsters are just shameless. They will act cute and harmless, then suddenly ambush you. Such a cute thing. It even goes chew. Dot what kind of vicious monsters are these? The rabbits pounce towards us. Part 8. We finally escaped the mob of rabbits and rested on a tree stump. Uck, why is it like this? It made a hole in my hat. I'll have to borrow some thread and a needle from someone or when we get back to the hotel. I hugged my hat while on the verge of tears. Puff, puff, s so scary. When those cute monsters attacked in a mob, I practically got a heart attack. Ionion was panting heavily after repeatedly using magic. Her face was pale as she said that. They were indeed scary enemies. The initial staggering walk was probably an act. They were so fast while chasing us. We managed to escape despite there being so many rabbits. But we couldn't bring back the bodies of the rabbits we managed to kill, so we can't get a reward for the rabbit meat. That's true, but Megumin, do you really want to go back to where those killer rabbits are? I don't. They looked so cute yet they were feasting on the wolf. Just watching that scene made me want to cry. I agreed. I didn't want to go back either. Megumin, shall we go back today? I used a lot of magic in the earlier battle. Let's at least go back to hunt on the plains. Hearing Eunion's suggestion, I reluctantly nodded. After resting a while, we took a detour to return to the town, avoiding the location where we met the rabbits. By the way, I gained a level from killing all those rabbits earlier. At this rate, it won't take too long for me to learn advanced magic. Ionion happily said. From tomorrow onward, let's stay in the plains to hunt weak monsters. W.Y.? You just don't want me to catch up, right? Is that it? Am I right? As Ionion grabbed and shook my shoulders violently, I suddenly noticed it. Question mark is something approaching. Do you hear it? That was a slight tremor on the ground. Question mark yes. What is it? Monsters? Good timing. I can gain another level. Ionion also noticed the sound from far away. No fair. It's my turn now. Ionion, please stand back. What are you saying? Megumin is the trump card against the devil, right? Even if you don't want me to surpass you. Say, isn't it a bit strange? Ionion uneasily said. It was indeed strange. Or rather, the amount of cries. I have a bad feeling about this. Let's try to avoid this, okay? F fine. I've had enough today anyway. Let's go back and use the money from selling the frogs to buy a meal. As Union said that, the noises grew even louder. This was the sound of a mob of monsters closing in. Quick, run, Union. This is bad. It will be dangerous if we stay here. W wait for me, Megumin. Don't leave me behind. Uck. The noises that were closing in ceased without us noticing. The surroundings became silent, then a sound was heard from the undergrowth behind us. What suddenly jumped out from there were the one-hit rabbits that we fought previously. Either they were chasing us or something was chasing them. The rabbits before us did not look cute anymore. Chew. X5. The rabbits appeared behind in twos and threes, crying out together. Megumin, Megumin. There are too many. Lightning. W what should we do? Why you try to buy me some time? I will destroy them in one shot. I said to Ionion as she used magic on the first wave of rabbits. I raised my staff and started my incantation. Using explosion magic in the forest will provoke others, right? I even avoided using fireball so I won't start a forest fire. Blade of wind. A one-hit rabbit pounced at Ionion, who was retreating as she chant her incantation. Ionion immediately drew her dagger to parry the rabbit's horn creating some sparks. We'll be eaten by rabbits if this goes on. Destroying nature is nothing. If I was worried about such things, I wouldn't have become an explosion mage. Eonion, get down. A. W. H. Wait. Explosion. I unleashed my magic at the rabbits as they closed in, knowing that I will be dragged into the explosion as well. 
The tip of the staff glowed, and the light shot into the mob of rabbits. In an instance, the surrounding trees were blown away by the explosive flames. Eonion and I were helplessly blown off by the violent winds. Part 9 Hey! Humans! Hey, humans! Still alive? I heard this seemingly faraway sound. It seemed I had lost consciousness for some time. I was currently lying flat on the ground. It felt like there were tree branches or something digging into my cheeks, so I should still be in the forest. I opened my eyes slightly and saw Eonion's sleeping face. I distractedly slapped Eonion's cheeks. Seeing that Eonion reacted to the pain, I breathed out in relief to know that she was fine. How long was I unconscious? I used explosion magic earlier, yet enough of my magic power had recovered for me to move my body, so it must have been quite a long time. Are you awake? Those eyes. Are you a crimson demon? A voice came from above my head. The speaker must have been protecting us while we were unconscious. Ugh. It hurts? Where am I? Every part of my body hurts. Eonion opened her eyes and propped herself up. I also got up. And looked at the person who spoke earlier. Yes. I'm a crimson demon by the name of Meg. I turned my head and froze. Eonion got up beside me and said casually. Question mark what is it, Megumin? You look strange. Wait. Ah. I remember. Seriously, Megumin. What were you thinking when you used magic at such a close range? You. What is. It. Eonion started to lecture me, but when she saw me in a stunned state, she followed my gaze. Hello. May I have a moment? My name is Hoost. Actually, I'm looking for a huge black magical beast in this area. Wait. A. Hey, your face looks familiar. Or rather, you look like someone else. That was a devil. It had pitch black skin with a metallic luster. It also had huge bat-like wings. It had a body capable of suppressing a giant as well as very noticeable horns and teeth. A greater devil. This type of devil should be in the deepest level of a dungeon. It was looking straight at us. My name is Hoost. I'm not a giant kobold, but a greater devil. I'm ordained to be in service to a certain brat in future. How is my self-introduction? You are crimson demons, right? This should be your custom for greetings, right? Ah. X2. Looking at the devil who grinned with a mouthful of teeth, we cried out in anguish and ran away. Part 10. How far did we run? We left the forest without realizing it. After confirming that the devil wasn't chasing us, we collapsed on the ground. Eonion's eyes were swollen from crying, she must be scared out of her wits. Puff, puff. WW. What is that? Th that devil was a preeminent greater devil. It looked really powerful and terrifying. Puff, puff. I really underestimated the devil in this place. I wasn't expecting something this powerful. Honestly, if I had encountered it alone, I would have probably peed in fright. Arnis was also a greater devil, but this one was really too scary. Eonion calmed down slowly and said. Megumin. Did that devil say something strange? Something about crimson demons and looking for a huge magical beast. I don't really remember, but it's pointless anyway. I think he said I looked like someone. Never mind. Whatever. We're lucky to survive after meeting something like that. I don't want to enter the forest for a while. Eonion's face was pale as she nodded at me. I sighed heavily. So tired. Hey, let's go back to rest, okay? Let's do that. But before that, let's go to the guild to receive payment for selling the frog meat. We can also make a report on that devil. We rested in the border between the plains and the forest, then walked towards the town. We left very early in the morning to hunt in the plains and forest. A considerable amount of time had passed before we noticed. In the glow of the sunset, we opened the door to the adventurer's guild. I'm serious. It stared at the abandoned castle on the hill near the town. It then got on the headless horse pulling the war chariot and went somewhere. 
there were adventurers drinking and being noisy everywhere, probably because this was the busy time for the guild. We went past the noisy crowd and approached the reception area. Sorry for the trouble. We are here to collect the payment. Oh. It's Megumin San and Ionion San. The frogs have been collected. Three frogs for a total of 15,000 eris. Please wait. We said to the One San receptionist who was preparing our payment. Uh. May I ask if there are any requests for one hit rabbits? We killed a lot of them in the forest. I presented my adventurous card, which recorded the kills. No. One hit rabbits are monsters in the deeper region of the forest. People won't normally be attacked by them, so there are no hunt quests. But someone saw them near the town recently, so they may become a target for hunt quests. Oh. What a pity. Ah, and that too. Actually, we encountered the devil in the forest. It is a greater devil. It has the intelligence to introduce itself as a greater devil. Its huge body and intense presence confirm that it is a powerful devil. Hearing this, the One San's expression froze. And it said that it was looking for a huge black magical beast. It could communicate and didn't immediately attack us. Maybe it is a friendly devil. Ionion said as the One San wondered. Huge black magical beast? I know something like that. The rookie killer is a dangerous monster with a huge body and black fur. Why is it looking for such a thing though? As a pet? The One San was troubled for a while. Oh. Thanks for your report. Greater devil and rookie killer, huh? This isn't merely dangerous anymore. We may have to forbid entry into the forest before investigation is finished. Please do not enter the forest anymore. The One San said and handed over the payment for the frogs. Part 11 I think this has become a major incident. We were on our way back to the hotel. Ionion muttered along the way. We encountered it at a very bad time. Right after we depleted our mana. Otherwise, upon meeting it, I could have given it a... Stop saying nonsense. We couldn't win against something like that. I feel like that devil could even withstand explosion magic. Oh. Is this a challenge? Very well. Let's change our plans for tomorrow and go back to the forest. No way. I definitely won't enter the forest. You can go alone if you want. We bickered as we walked past the office for construction works. Th thanks. Good work, supervisor. Good work, boss Tilda. The familiar and noticeable duo appeared before the office. It seemed they just got off work. The guy looked really tired. The girl, who hated manual labor so much yesterday, was smiling as if she spent a productive day. The guy staggered along and said. Should we find a different job tomorrow? As you said, we really can't do this job. I looked at the guy who complained. What are you saying? Seriously, you're such a neat. How can we change jobs right after starting? Let's go. Use the wages to have a good bath and meal, then work hard again tomorrow. The girl's eyes brightened and she clenched her fist. It seemed she discovered the joys of working. What are you standing there for? Megumin, do you know them? No. I don't know them. It's nothing. Let's go. I urged Union back to the hotel. That's right. They were merely people I happened to run across. But, for some reason, I felt good whenever I see them. I was somewhat concerned. I want to drink ice-cold beer. Hey, hey. That's alcohol. Can we drink alcohol? What's the laws in this country? Seriously, why are you so timid? Then let's make do with cold Neroid today. Neroid? What is Neroid? That girl didn't reply. I'm hungry. Let's go. Do you know? The public bath house is open at this time. I can have a good bath right now. I'll go on ahead. She shouted and ran off. Ah. Hey. Wait. What the heck is Neroid? By the way, if you run like that, you'll fall. Before the guy finished saying, the girl fell down. Megumin. Maybe it's better if we don't look. T true. 
Let's go. I listened to the girl who was crying after she dropped her purse when she fell. We returned to the hotel. A lot of things happened today. I took a quest with Eonion, then hunted frogs and rabbits. And encountered a greater devil. What exactly is that devil? When it saw my face, it said I looked like someone. I remember that it was looking for a huge black magical beast. Now that I thought of it, perhaps it might have been better to listen to it further. I opened the door to my room as I thought about this. After walking in, I immediately rushed out and knocked on Eonion's door. Eonion, I'm sorry. Come quickly. When I returned to my room just now, our little black magical beast Komyusuk wasn't moving. Where's the food? You locked it in the room since this morning, right? Did you leave some water and food for it? Interlude, Scene 2 A troubled lonely girl. Listen to me. If you are looking for a companion, I have a good recommendation. There is an excellent spearman by the name of Rain Chelka in this town. He should be the youngest dragon knight from the neighboring country. He's very famous. Don't you find it suspicious? Anyway, if he is so famous, why is he adventuring in the rookie town? By the way, do you know what he looks like? Hmm. Uh. I don't know what he looks like, but I heard that he is of noble birth. Except for those who bought their status with money, nobles should have blonde hair and blue eyes. That's right. Just find a polite handsome guy with blonde hair and blue eyes. The noisy conversation echoed in the adventurer's guild. Upon closer examination, a girl with a spear on her back was arguing with a girl who looked like a thief. Both of them were about my age. Excellent spearman, huh? Blonde hair is very conspicuous. Anyway, I want a mage or priest. If you see someone like that, please persuade the person. A young man with a magic sword was talking cheerfully with them. It seemed all three of them were in one party. Anyway, that guy said he was looking for a mage or priest just now. This was my chance. If I continued to be passive, the distance between me and Megumin would only widen. I had given up on adventurers coming over to talk to me. If I didn't act now, I would regret it later. I could not accept being inferior to Megumin forever. I made my decision and stood up, walking over to the guy with the magic sword. Ha! Ha! After coming close to the guy, I turned back as I was afraid of the threatening gestures of the other two girls. This wouldn't do. I was a lonely coward, destined to be number two forever. Just then. Little girl, what is troubling you? Despite how I look, I'm still a priest. If you don't mind, I'll listen to your problems. As I sprawled on the table in despair over yet another failure to find companions, a beautiful Onesan came and talked to me. That Onesan was wearing a blue priestly robe, so she is probably an Axis cultist. On the way to this town, I was troubled by the Axis cultists, so I didn't want to get involved with her, but. After coming to this town, something that should have been easily resolved was unexpectedly difficult, so I was very troubled. Unwittingly, I confessed my problem to the One San. Even though the other person belonged to the Axis cult, feared by everyone for their unrestrained behavior. The One San quietly listened to my problem and then said. No problem. Lady Aqua will help you. Hearing her kind words, I couldn't help but raise my head. As I looked at her respectfully, she immediately took out a piece of paper. She gently handed the paper to me. It was something I had seen before. An Axis cult recruitment form. Come. If you join Axis cult, you will definitely meet someone good. The One San's attitude suddenly changed and forced me to receive the paper. T too much. That's indeed the Axis cult to take advantage of a kid's depression. Rescuing someone from the quicksand in order to kick the person off the cliff. Look at her happy expression. Their doctrines teach them to do things that annoy others. Unbelievable. But that kid still won't. The people in the distance said as they observed our situation. I clutched the recruitment form tightly. I want to join the Axis cult. If I do that. If I do that, I can make friends and find companions, right? A. X3. 
Hearing my decision, even the big sister from the Axis cult was surprised. Chapter 3, Crazy Priestess and the Water Goddess Part 1 The guild was noisier than usual this morning. The third party needs a priest. If any party has more than two priests, please send one over. Any mages? There aren't enough magic potions here. We need a mage that can create potions. It was a week after we reported the devil to the guild. In order for the guild to investigate, the adventurers were banned from entering the forest, thereby losing a good place to make a living. At first, everyone was obediently hunting in the plains. But the hot-blooded adventurers wouldn't behave like that forever. The guild was continuously pestered with questions about permission to enter the forest. Finally, the guild decided to take down the devil and recruited a hunting expedition. The adventurers who were confident in their abilities came early to prepare as they were angry about losing the forest as a hunting ground. I looked at the busy adventurers from the side. We really caused a big problem. I whispered to Eonion, who was nervously gripping her staff. W.Y. are you so calm? Megumin, you saw that devil. There wasn't anything as scary even in the monster-infested areas near the Crimson Demon Village. Eonion interrogated me while on the verge of tears. If you are so reluctant to go, you can stay behind. There are so many adventurers, so we shouldn't lose. Even if there aren't one hundred participants, there must be at least twenty or thirty of them. Anyone who joins the expedition will receive a reward. Even if you just tag along, you can get some money. It's not a bad opportunity. And no way. I if you're joining, I'll be worried. What did you say? You just said something, right? Come. Say it again more loudly. You heard that, right? You wanted me to say it again because you heard it, right? Eonion blushed so hard that her ears were red. She sprawled face down on the table. I laughed and shook her as I re-evaluated the situation in the guild. According to Eonion, who came here very early in the morning, a beautiful but pale One San had been distributing potions and other items to the expedition members. That One San was sadly whispering, at this rate, will be reduced to eating bread crumbs and sugared water. With this many people and this much support, even a greater devil should be manageable. But my reason for joining the expedition isn't merely for the reward. Think about it. If I can show off my skills during the expedition, and other parties would rush to invite me even if I don't ask for recruitment. I must stir up a storm. Hearing this, the dark clouds on Eonion's face were swept away. Besides, there are two famous adventuring parties in this expedition. According to what I've heard, one party has a handsome guy with a magic sword, while the other... Just then... Hey, hey! Are you little girls joining too? Spare us. This isn't a picnic. W. Wait. Rex, look closely. They are crimson demons. They might be more powerful than you. Suddenly, a man and a woman standing at the side started talking to us. The man was tall, and had a huge scar on his nose. The woman looked pretty, but her eyes were sharp and focused. If I remembered correctly, the party that they belonged to. Ha! More powerful than me? These two brats? Hey, stop joking. You say something too. No. It is as Sophie said. Haven't you heard of the Crimson Demons? I heard that they were all archwizards and everyone could use advanced magic. They are the elites among mages. No way, Terry. Hey, can both of you really use advanced magic? Yes. They were the other famous adventuring party. No. We can't use advanced magic. Eonion nodded to agree with my reply. Hearing my answer, Rex gave Terry a look as if saying you see? He laughed. A. Hey. No. This is really strange. I heard crimson demons should be like that. Well, rumors tend to be exaggerated. Like that magic sword user who is supposed to be better than me. What's his name again? And that crazy mage that a person must definitely not get involved with. Those are all exaggerations. Forget it. If you want to earn a bit of money, it's fine. Just make sure you little girls put in effort and don't hold us back, okay? 
Rex said and laughed like a child, then led his party away. Was this the baptismal rite for rookie adventurers? If it was the previous me, I would have started chanting immediately to scare him off, but since he was a member of the expedition, it would be better not to make a scene. Megumin, no. Calm down. A. W. What are you doing? S. Stop it. As I was watching Rex leave, Eonion hugged me from behind. She must have thought that I would do something to Rex. I won't do anything. Let me go. Even I have grown enough to not be provoked by this. Or rather, do you really think I'm that unreasonable of a person? And don't press your boobs on my back. It's so uncomfortable. If you don't let go, I'm going to grab those boobs that you are so proud of until I leave a mark and make them shrink. Part 2 In the melancholic and dense forest Eonion and I were in the group at the rear of the expedition. Sob, sob. Eonion was crying next to me as she pressed on her chest. Stop crying already. We still have to guard the rear. W whose fault do you think it is? Uck. I thought they would be torn off. There were ten teams joining this expedition. Each team consisted of six to ten members. I heard that the vanguard was led by the party with the handsome guy who had a magic sword. As for the rearguard. Hey. We meet again. If monsters appear, both of you can just hide. But try and be quiet for now. Rex mocked us as his party vigilantly advanced. Ah. S. Sorry. Eonion made herself smaller as she was reminded of her position. Although Rex's party was famous, all the members had frontline jobs. Led by Rex with his greatsword, the others had spears, axes, or similar weapons. Speak for yourself. You don't look like a mage. Do you know that there are slimes in this forest? When slimes that are immune to physical attacks appear, you should hide and let our Eonion take care of them. Me Megumin. Eonion softly admonished me. Hearing my words, Rex grinned. Oh. You dare to say something like that? Let's watch your performance then. It's true slimes are troublesome, so if they appear. Before Rex finished his words, as if it was happening on cue, the advance party of the expedition sounded an alarm. Monsters are appearing. Hearing the cries of the advance party, Rex and the others cautiously watched the surroundings. If the target devil appeared, they would scatter to surround the enemy and let the priests and mages in various teams initiate attacks. If the vanguard encountered the devil first, they would rush over immediately. But. Damn. Why are there so many mob monsters? Hey, finish them off quickly. If the vanguard encounters the devil, we must support them as soon as possible. Faced with a sudden influx of monsters, Rex and the other adventurers were anxious. This was that kind of phenomenon. When a powerful monster appeared, Mob's monsters would scatter and flee. We went through the same thing when we fought Arnis. In other words, that devil must be nearby. Something aimed at Sophie's head and dropped from the tree. Lightning. Eonion's magic hit the slime making a sneak attack at Sophie. It shivered a bit and dissolved. Everyone looked up at the treetop from which the slime dropped. A. X2. A large group of green slimes were tightly packed in the canopy, as if they grew from the trees themselves. No. I can't stand it. I want to go back to the Crimson Demon Village. Eonion, stop crying. Think of a way to get rid of them. I know it's very disgusting, but if I blast so many slimes away, the surviving slimes would be blown away in all directions. Use magic to burn them up here. I urged the crying Eonion and pushed her from behind. Stop it. I understand. I will get rid of them. Stop pushing me. Hey, you're a crimson demon too, right? Can't you use magic? If she is so unwilling, then don't force her. At the moment when Rex was blaming me. Fireball. Even though she was afraid of the densely packed slimes, Eonion used her magic at full power. Accompanied by an explosive noise, the full-powered fireball struck the trees, engulfing all the slimes in flames. Th this is so amazing. That's what I said. They are the elites among mages. S so competent. She's that girl, right? 
the one who is always playing with poker cards in a corner of the guild. Both Rex and Terry, as well as the other adventurers nearby, exclaimed as they looked up at the burning trees. Well. Not bad, Eonion. You're truly a crimson demon. W.H. What are you doing? You. After burning up the slimes, Eonion was on the verge of tears as she pounced at me. Meanwhile, Rex and the others doused the flames on the trees. Ah, so sorry. I apologize for looking down on you. Can that shorty over there do the same thing? No. My magic is more unique. Uh. It's a trump card against powerful enemies. Using it here would be a waste. I stuttered an excuse. Rex listened and raised his eyebrow. What? A mage who is all talk and no action. What did you say? Wait, Megumin. Calm down. Didn't you say in the guild that you have grown beyond such provocations? As we argued, a noise echoed from the vanguard. If I remembered correctly, the handsome guy with the magic sword was in the front line. They should be able to exterminate the monsters, right? As I thought about this, one of the frontline adventurers ran over. Hey, this is bad. We can't win against that thing. The devil suddenly appeared and the hero with the magic sword was wounded by its sneak attack. That devil could even use advanced magic. That was the level of a general of the demon king's army. Retreat. Hearing that adventurer's warning, we and the rest of the rearguard acted like bees after the beehive was attacked. Part 3 in the twilight, the entire expedition walked lifelessly as if we were all undead. T.S.K. What kind of magic sword-wielding hero is that? He was defeated so quickly. If we were in the vanguard, we wouldn't be so embarrassingly counter-attacked, right? We were on our way back to Axel. In the weary expedition, Rex clicked his tongue and complained. It seemed the hero with the magic sword was rather famous. According to what I've heard, the devil launched a sudden attack upon the magic sword user. The hero with the magic sword was famous even within the demon king's army. Hero with the magic sword. Hero with the magic sword. I seem to recall hearing something like this before. A hero candidate who owned a powerful magic sword. Right. If I remembered correctly, it was when I was still a student in school. Even if you say that, he used his sword to attack the devil, after being wounded. It seemed he sliced off a wing. We were able to easily escape because of him. After all, the enemy was at the level of a general of the Demon King's army. We'll have to wait for the guild to summon higher-level adventurers from other cities. Sophie explained to Rex. Only Rex was dissatisfied, as he spat on the ground. Adventurers, welcome back. We received the report. It seems the enemy is rather difficult to deal with. The Oné San receptionist welcomed us back in the guild. During this expedition, the magic sword user was badly injured. In addition, more than ten people were lightly wounded. Priests used healing magic and potions, but the teams couldn't fight any further for now. After all, the main fighting force was forced to retire due to their severe injuries. One of the adventurers shrugged. This can't be helped. The enemy is a greater devil. It's too strong for us rookies. Let's wait for support from the high-level adventurers from other cities. The support request has been sent, right? His casual statement brought a troubled expression to the Oné San. What was going on? I had a bad premonition. Uh. Everyone, please calm down and listen. According to our recent reports, a general of the Demon King's army, Beldia the Dullahan, left the Demon King's castle along with a ton of undead. These words caused a disturbance in the guild. Currently, Beldia's goals and destination are unknown. But this town has only rookie adventurers and is strategically unimportant, so this is the only place that wouldn't be his target. Therefore, the Oné San looked apologetic. Until the matter with Beldia is resolved, the other cities cannot afford to send anyone to support us. In other words, we can only rely on everyone in this town to deal with that devil. The mood in the guild was already weary. Now it was like a stagnant pool of water. Sensing the mood, the Oné-san hurriedly added. Wait. 
it isn't just bad news. Although she's an adventurer who registered only recently. There is an elite in this town who can banish devils, someone who has the rare job of archpriest. Archpriest. Even among the advanced jobs, very few people took on this job. As the natural enemy of devils and undead, it was truly the most suitable job for this expedition. But. Hey, wait. You said she is an adventurer who registered only recently. Isn't that a level one archpriest? Right. If she just registered, her level must be low. Naturally, she couldn't learn any reliable skills. Her statistics should also be. Listen to me. Most of that archpriest's statistics are very high. And she is an excellent archpriest who has learned all the skills. Her words shocked the adventurers in the guild. And then. What kind of priest is she? Hey, is it true? If that archpriest is really so good, maybe she can deal with that devil. What does she look like? Describe that archpriest for us. Among the excited adventurers, a bored man who was drinking beer stood up. If that archpriest is here, she can easily heal the hero with a magic sword, right? This way, in addition to the archpriest, even the magic sword user can join the battle once more. That would definitely. This speech caused the adventurers to look at each other. That archpriest has watery blue hair and a goddess-like beauty. Oh. X3. The One San hadn't even finished her sentence before the adventurers rushed out of the guild. Just the male adventurers at least. Everyone has left. Should we go and search too? They are so enthusiastic. They should find her quickly. I feel really tired. Is it? I intend to stay in the guild for a while. Look, ah. Uh, my magic was somewhat useful earlier, right? So, ah. Uh, she was probably referring to the scene where she defeated the slimes. I see. She wanted to wait and see if the other parties might be impressed by her performance and invite her to join. But how should I say this? I looked around at the empty guild. Ah, uh, then, don't come back too late, okay? I know. No problem. I will be back in the morning. Co come back a bit earlier. Part 4 The adventurers were running all over the town. It was evening. The workers had finished their jobs and were returning home. The well-built adventurers were pushing their way through the crowd, hindering the traffic. Watery blue-haired goddess. Find that watery blue-haired goddess. There were shouts like that everywhere. Not long after, there was a girl's cry of anguish, accompanied by a crashing noise. It seemed one of the adventurers dashing about had ran over a pedestrian. Hey, watch where you're going. Because you ran me over, my wages are all scattered on the floor. Pick them up quickly. My wages amount to ten thousand eris. If they don't add up, you can compensate using your own money. Yo you. Is this really okay? After all, you are a. Uck. Hearing the two familiar voices, I turned to look and it was indeed them. The girl with watery blue hair covered the mouth of her male companion with her hands. S sorry. I will pick them up now. But the money on the floor couldn't possibly amount to ten thousand eris. A, you have blue hair? Question mark what? I have watery blue hair. Do you have a problem with that? Whatever. Just pick up my money. If you're too slow, I won't make it in time for the first batch at the bathhouse. I did a lot of work today, so I want to hurry up and bathe. Ah. S sorry, although her hair is watery blue. Is this really an super excellent archpriest? As beautiful as a goddess. This must be a mistake. Her face is full of mud and dirt. And a high-class sacred job holder wouldn't resort to racketeering. Question mark what? What did you say? No. Nothing. I didn't say anything. We are very busy now, so I will give you these. Please let me go. Goodbye. The adventurer handed over ten thousand eris to the girl as compensation and ran off. Fantastic. Look, this is how you do things. Quickly, pick up the money on the floor. Hey, why are you crying? You. Is this supposed to be an object of worship and reverence? What are you saying now? Isn't it obvious? 
It's not obvious at all. The girl held her money tightly and started to argue with the guy. An archpriest with watery blue hair and a goddess-like beauty. At least I knew that blue-haired girl was not the one we were looking for. I dragged my tired body back to my room. Right. I had not done my daily use of explosion magic today. I would ask Ionion to accompany me when she returned. I thought about this as I reached for the door. Welcome back. Make him in San. Do you want a bath? Or want to eat me? Or do you want to join the Axis cult? I listened and then lightly closed the door. Then, the closed door suddenly opened violently. Make him in San is so shy. You are so irresistibly cute. You're still just as much of a lowly as before. The priestess I met previously in Alkanrisha was before me. It was the Axis cult on A-San who dragged me into various affairs in that town. Part 5 On A-San You can call me on A-Chan, Heart, too. I lay on the bed in the room and pressed on my head, as if I was having a headache. I looked at the on A-San who was sitting on the chair, smiling, and hugging Komiusuk. I spoke again. I have a lot of things to do, on A-San. My name is Cecily. You can call me on a chan or on a san, but our relationship should be close enough for us to address each other's names directly. On a san, why are you here? I locked the door when I left this morning. But I didn't expect for this person to enter my room. Or rather, this person should be an Alcanrisha, performing the acts of terrorism that they called proselytizing. Call me Cecily. Well, it's a long story. Cecily looked troubled as she put her finger to her lips. It's very troublesome to explain, so it's fine to just consider it as a guidance of Lady Aqua. It's not fine at all. Anyway, the door was locked. How did you even get inside? Faced with my forceful retort, Cecily suddenly looked serious. Actually, I have a request for you, Megumin san. That's why I'm here. Even if you look serious, you still can't fudge this. To summarize Cecily's explanation. As the highest-ranking official of the Axis cult, Zesta apparently heard the voice of the goddess Aqua. According to Cecily, Zesta was one of the top archpriests in the Axis cult. Apparently, he could even receive oracles from his goddess. I see. Although I always thought of him as nothing more than a pervert, he still has the ability to drive off a greater devil like Arnis. Receiving an oracle is still possible. I readjusted my impression of him, feeling that he at least seemed slightly like someone with a sacred job. Then, what exactly was the oracle about? Would there be a disaster in Axel? Or has the hero who would defeat the demon king been born? Lord Zester said that he received a divine telepathic message from Lady Aqua, coming from the direction of Axel. A few days ago, he heard a voice saying, I'm Aqua. That's right, the goddess Aqua worshipped by the religious order of Axis. If thou art a believer, may you give me some aid by lending me some money? TL Note, see Explosion Volume 2 Chapter 5 for the entire scene. This is way too suspicious. An oracle itself was a difficult thing to believe. It was even more so when the contents involved asking for money. We don't really understand the meaning of the oracle, but Lady Aqua must have encountered some major problems. Even Lord Zester would not take Lady Aqua's name in vain to benefit himself. We don't know why Lady Aqua wants money, so as the beautiful priestess of the Axis cult, I was sent here to investigate further. The Axis cult really has nothing better to do. Questioning the beautiful priestess part was too troublesome, so I ignored it. And which part of that mysterious oracle actually involved me? After coming to this town, I understood the meaning of Lady Aqua's oracle. This town is currently under the threat of a certain devil, whose kind is the true enemy of the Axis cult. Cecily continued to hug Komio Suk with a serious expression. She came closer to me as I sat on the bed. Yes. A devil appeared in the forest near the town, causing some problems for adventurers. Are you saying that the oracle is referring to this incident? Cecily maintained her serious look as she snuck into my bed. What was she doing while wearing such a serious expression? Yes. Axis cult doctrines include an ironclad rule that devils must be killed. 
Lady Aqua wanted money in this town. Plus, Lord Zester said that something was happening in this town. Yes. Cecily snuck beneath my blanket on her own and exposed her face to continue saying. The contents of the oracle is to use the money given to me by the cult to employ mercenaries to kill the devil that appeared near this town. Aye is that so? By the way, can you come out from there? This is my room. My bed is used for sleeping. Ignoring me, Cecily happily buried her nose into the bed sheet and sniffed heavily. Hey! When I arrived in this town, I thought of Megumin San who I took care of before. Hey! Whatever it is. Get off my bed first. When I tried to remove the blanket, Cecily put up an unexpectedly strong resistance. She would be quite pretty if she would just shut her mouth. Why did Axis cultists always make people feel regretful? There are very few Axis cultists in this town. They couldn't even sustain the normal operations of a church, so it is impossible to find enough people. Thus, I have a request for Megumin San. I don't care. I don't care what you say. I don't want to get involved with you any more. And stop sniffing at my pillow. After I removed the blanket, Cecily maintained her lying position on my bed. She retrieved a heavy sack from her pocket. If you find the legendary archpriest in this town, you get five million. If you defeat the devil, it will be ten million. I'll do it. And so, I went to help out the Axis cult again. Part 6 Cecily and I were walking along the street. Hey, how is it? Did you find her? Nope. There isn't any skillful and beautiful archpriest with watery blue hair. There is only a drunk performer with watery blue hair. Damn. Beautiful archpriest lady, where are you? The adventurers were still running around and searching for that archpriest. They've been searching for so long with no results. Can we really find her? Cecily listened to my question. Where exactly are they looking for her? It may be better to search in a different location. In your opinion, what are the places that an archpriest would likely appear? Places that an archpriest would likely appear. Probably praying in a church or pacifying lost souls in the communal cemetery. The person was supposed to be a skillful archpriest. She must have a strong faith and a noble personality. As a priestess of the Axis cult, the things that I would do at this time. Firstly, I would rush to the public bathhouse to be the first to take a bath. Then, have a feast of frog meat and ice cold beer. After that, I would scold the drunk man who would be staring lustily at my voluptuous figure. Finally, I would go home in satisfaction after throwing rocks at the heiress church. What kind of holy person is that? Was that archpriest also an Axis cultist like her? No way. According to the One San receptionist, she should be a goddess-like beauty with high statistics and great skills. Then, the chances of her being an Axis cultist should be astronomically low. Probably. Yes, my intuition is very accurate. If we look in the places I mentioned, we can probably find that archpriest. So how about it? The bathhouse should be quite empty right now. You just want to take a bath, right? Let's try the church first. Ah. Megumin Sam. We can search tomorrow. Why don't we go and take a bath together now? We can wash each other's backs. If you don't want to search, I'll go back now. We went to the heiress church first. That's what I intended. But I regretted bringing Cecily along immediately. Hey, open up. I know you're hiding the archpriest who could defeat the devil here. Open up if you value your door. Cecily was pounding and kicking the main door of the heiress church. There's no such person here. It is forbidden for anyone associated with the Axis cult to enter this church. Please leave. Please leave. An agonized shout by an heiress cultist was heard from within the church. Cecily clicked her tongue when she saw that the cultists have no intention of opening the door. It's your turn, Megumin San. Please use magic to blow this church away on my behalf. How could I possibly do that? Comma, it would be fine if you communicated normally at the start. Why are you doing this? Please don't complicate matters. I sighed and walked over to the closed door. Ah. Uh, I'm an adventurer. 
Can we talk? Are you looking for the archpriest? Please leave. There is no beautiful archpriest here. What is happening lately? Quite a few adventurers in town have come over. Everyone was thinking the same thing. Sorry to bother you. Actually, there a powerful devil has appeared near the town recently. Can you let that archpriest help drive away the devil? There was silence on the other side of the door, as if someone was listening to me. The reliable and skillful adventurer was injured. We hope to find that archpriest to help with healing that adventurer and opposing the devil. Right when I said this. The church door opened. There is no such archpriest in this church. A tired-looking woman in priestly robes said to me through the slightly opened door. I gave a bow, intending to leave. Although she is not in this church, the nearby orphanage frequently organizes events to give away food. I don't know if she is there or not, but itinerant priests tend to participate in such events. The woman said and smiled at me. Exclamation mark thank you very much for your... As I was thanking her, there was a sound of something breaking in the church, followed by an anguished cry. I turned to see what was happening. Good ball. There was a pile of rocks at Cecily's feet. Facing the broken window, she made a victory pose as if she had accomplished her goal. On the way to the orphanage. Are you stupid? Why are all the Axis cultists so stupid? What is that good ball? I know your relationship with Eris cultists isn't good, but what caused you to do something like that? Actually, it is a bit strange. Since coming to this town, my mood has been unusually high. It's like, my form is better than usual. Perhaps it's a blessing from our great Lady Aqua? If your excited mood is really a kind of blessing, I would punch Goddess Aqua when I meet her after I died. Phew! But it was so dangerous. I didn't expect that demure priestess to freak out and pounce over. Exactly. Even such an amiable person became so angry. What exactly were you trying to do? I was really shocked when that gentle priestess suddenly changed her mood. It was evening now, so dusk was setting into the surrounding. As dinner time approached, the taverns and food stores along the road became crowded. As we passed by a certain tavern, there was an exceptionally loud cheer from within. Hearing the cheer, Cecily staggered over like a moth attracted by the flame. Hey, where are you going? We have no time to play. If we don't hurry to the orphanage, tonight's charity event will be over. Even if you say that, that tavern is full of happy cheers. As an Axis cultist, my intuition tells me that the archpriest is inside that tavern. What would that archpriest be doing in that place? That tavern is where performers congregate. Why would a powerful and noble holy person be in that place? But Lord Zester, the top holy man in our cult, would go to even more disreputable taverns every three days. Please don't treat that old man as a holy man. It will make other holy people freak out. I dragged the resisting Cecily along, and approached the location for the charity event. We arrived at the orphanage as the charity event was happening. Gulp, I see. She's not here either. Gulp. Another bowl please. Fill it to the brim. Cecily was stuffing her face with the food meant for the poor. She was seriously thinking about something as she demanded another portion. There should be a limit to one's willfulness. Were all the Axis cultists like this? Correct. No such person participated in the charity events. But watery blue hair. There is a girl with watery blue hair who frequently comes to eat our food. Could she be who you are looking for? A powerful and beautiful archpriest probably wouldn't be eating food meant for charity. It seemed it was a wasted trip. I thanked the person helping out with the charity event. Cecily said as she pressed on her bulging belly. Phew. Thanks for the treat. Megumin Sam. I always feel sleepy after eating. The archpriest should be in dreamland now. Let's go back and sleep, okay? Th this girl. The last place to search was the cemetery. The surroundings were completely dark. An unspeakable mood permeated the communal cemetery on a hill far away from the town. By the light of my lantern, Cecily and I stood in the middle of the communal cemetery. 
the wide cemetery was completely lifeless. It was unacceptable for me to say it myself, but would there be an archpriest in this kind of place? At the moment when I entertain such doubts. Eh. Whoa. Cecily suddenly shouted, and I followed suit. I nearly dropped my lantern as I looked around in panic. W what happened? Did undead appear? I said as I became more alert and covered Cecily who was behind me. Giggle. Megumin San really went woe. She even made a woe sound. That's really so cute. Ouch. Ouch. Sorry, I'm just joking. I won't do it again. Stop it already. Spare me. I smacked her angrily with my staff. Komiusuk, who stayed close to my feet since we came from the town, suddenly raised its head to stare at a point in midair. It was staring right behind Cecily and I. I looked at the unmoving Komiusuk as it continued to stare. On san Ah. Uh, since you are a priestess, I have a request for you. W what? Let me say it first. I can only use simple healing magic. I didn't practice much with turn undead, and I can't remember the incantation well too. What should I do? This person was totally unreliable. Just then, under the moonlight, another shadow fell at our feet from behind. The shadow was about the size of a will-o'-the-wisp. It had a dangling motion. Let's turn around at the count of three. I agree. If there's something there, we fight it together, okay? Fine. Then, ready? I took a deep breath. At the same time, there was a sound of something stepping on the ground. One, two, three. X two. As we shouted, Cecily and I both starting running without looking back. Wait, Megumin San. This isn't what we agreed. That's my line. You're the holy person here. You should stay behind to let a girl who is much younger than you escape. We argued as we ran next to each other. We ran all the way to the town without looking back. I'm your employer. I didn't receive the money yet. Besides, your request is to find a person, not to protect you. W. Wait a moment. There seemed to be a weak and lonely voice speaking to us as we fled. Toto much. Ha. Ha. To think that the naive and cute Megumin from before would twist her personality to this manner? I grew wiser after falling for your trap several times. When we arrived at the town gate, we panted and sat on the ground. By the way, I think I heard a female voice when we were running away. Could that have been the archpriest we're looking for? Cecily fanned her face with her hand and replied. Nope. I peeked once before we left the cemetery. I saw a beautiful woman with long wavy hair and a face as pale as the undead. Under the moonlight. I understand. Stop saying it. I get the point, so please don't continue. Part 7 The morning after Cecily, and I searched the town fruitlessly. Ionion had waited in the guild until morning. She sprawled on the table, crying. Sob, sob, me but, all the people who saw my performance that day. I was hoping that maybe someone would come and find me. Just wait a bit more. If I wait a bit more. In that case, you should have calculated the time that they would return instead of waiting until morning. How shy can you get? The adventurers who rushed out of the guild back then have not returned to the guild. They dispersed after searching. Cecily, who was enthusiastic yesterday, stayed in the room out of exhaustion. When I woke Cecily, who was sleeping in my room, she said she was too worried about my personality change to sleep, so she wanted to take a nap. She went back to sleep. Even if she said it was my fault, I knew that Cecily had been drinking in the tavern on the first floor of the hotel through the night. Axis cultists were really too carefree. Didn't they understand the concept of rules and precepts? Never mind. Since I accepted the request, I couldn't just stand around doing nothing. But to deal with that devil, there were no other options except to wait for the magic sword user to recover or find the legendary archpriest. I didn't know what to do, so I remained here with Ionion, who was still sprawling on the table. Oh! The mage who is all talk, what are you doing here? Didn't you join in the search for the archpriest? Rex, 
who was drinking beer early in the morning, taunted me. Oh! Isn't this the master adventurer who fled with the mage who is all talk after witnessing the defeat of the magic sword user? What are you doing here? Are you so afraid of the devil that you're drinking early in the morning to drown your fears? Oh! A little brat like you dares to say this? Hey, who is a little brat? Make it clear. Depending on your answer, we may need to have a word outside. Wait, Megumin. Don't fight within a minute of meeting each other. Sorry. She has been a bit frustrated since yesterday. Eonion hurriedly pacified us. Rex frowned. Ah, no. I should be the one who is sorry. I'm rather frustrated too. Ah. I couldn't find any lead to that archpriest. So I was picking a fight out of frustration. Sorry. Even master adventurers like them couldn't find her. Or rather, every adventurer in the town couldn't find her. Maybe it might be better to assume that the archpriest had left for other cities. Oh, right. I'm not just here to pick a fight. This is the main topic. Actually, we received some good news about that devil. I don't know about your skills, but I have seen the power of that little girl over there. How about it? Want to join? Rex added with a grin. On the mountain road far from the town, there was an eyewitness report about a certain monster. This was probably Rex's good news. It's about time you tell us. What monster is it? He he. It's a difficult monster for rookie adventurers. Go back now if you are scared. It's not impossible for the three of us to deal with it anyway. Eonion and I followed Rex's party towards the foot of the mountain. Terry was holding some ropes, while the horse was pulling a huge cage. The clue is a large black monster. You were the ones who reported about the devil, right? I heard that the devil is looking for a large black magical beast, right? Hearing Sophie's explanation, my face turned pale. Eonion stopped moving. From her look, it seemed she was also thinking of the same thing. Ah, uh, so the monster that we are looking for now is. Oh. It seems you have guessed it. Yes. It's the rookie killer. Eonion and I made a right turn and went back the way we came. Rookie Killer. True to its name, it was a monster said to be the bane of rookie adventurers. Hey, hey. Aren't you Crimson Demons the elites among mages? I did say that you should go back if you are afraid, what are we going to do if you really go back? It is exactly because we are the elites among mages. A rookie killer is cunning and very agile. Its intelligence is very high and it occasionally sets up ambushes. And it has the habit of attacking the weaker targets first. It always goes for the mages first when it's encountered. It's agile and can appear before you in a blink of an eye. Even having a rearguard is pointless. And we are low-level rookies. Thus, it was a troublesome monster for mages. Yes. As low-level mages, we were the ideal prey for the rookie killer. No problem. We have hunted rookie killers several times. We just want you to use some magic after we capture it. We will protect you. Don't worry. Rex said it so casually, but could this muscle-brained guy really defend against the ambush of a rookie killer? In other words, I just need to use sleep magic when it is being captured, right? But what do you intend to do after capturing the rookie killer? Rex pointed to the metal cage with his thumb and said, Of course. We are going to bring it back to the town after trapping it in a cage. That devil is looking for a large black magical beast. At the same time, someone witnessed the appearance of the rookie killer here. We can probably conclude that the devil is looking for it. This should be that devil's pet. In other words, the captured rookie killer could be used as bait or a bargaining chip. After banishing the devil or driving it away from the forest near the town, we can share the reward provided by the guild. How about it? This is not a bad deal, right? Rex said with a grin. Part 8 A rookie killer frequently hides near a community of mob monsters like goblins or kobolds. Goblins and kobolds were attractive targets for rookie adventurers to gain experience. So the rookie killer uses goblins and kobolds as bait to lure those adventurers out. In other words, if we wanted to capture a rookie killer. Blade of Wind well done. 
That's the Crimson Demons for you. So powerful. Good. You guys join in. Rex swung his two-handed sword and charged into the midst of the goblins. Sophie followed closely behind with her spear. Only Terry remained to protect us with his battleaxe. They seemed to deserve their reputation as master adventurers. In the blink of an eye, Rex and the others finished off more than ten goblins and switched to a defensive position. A rookie killer would habitually stay near the goblin community to bait adventurers. After an attack on the goblins, if there was a rookie killer nearby. Behind you, Terry. As Rex shouted, the bushes behind us moved violently and a black shadow pounced over. The black shadow charged at Eoneal, but was immediately blocked by Terry, who moved in front of her. Growl. See come at me. As Terry confronted the rookie killer, Eoneon speedily finished her incantation. Sleep. She pointed her staff at the rookie killer. The huge black body lay down on the ground without resistance. Whoa. X3. Rex and the others cheered for the easy successful capture. They surrounded the unmoving rookie killer. Your name is Eoneon, right? You are really capable. Do you want to join our party? Yes. Such a powerful mage is quite rare. How about it? I'm present, so this isn't a male-only party. It shouldn't be that uncomfortable, right? Our party is full of muscular fools who have frontline jobs. It would be great if we can have a mage. A. A. Are you talking about me? After being praised, Eonion blushed and behaved suspiciously. She had been waiting for an invitation for so long. Now that she was being officially invited, she panicked. Eonion looked to me for help, but this was truly a form of training. Just leave her be. Never mind. We can discuss the party issue later in the town. Firstly, we must bring this thing back. Right. If it is locked in a cage near the town, the devil would take the initiative to negotiate, right? If it is a greater devil, it should have high intelligence and can probably communicate. Megumin spoke to that devil before, right? Yes. How should I say this? Now that I think about it, that devil seemed rather friendly, but... We had successfully captured the rookie killer. Now, we just had to return to the town and wait for the devil to come. What? Is something wrong? By the way, I haven't seen you use any sort of magic during our last expedition and this mission. Can't you contribute anything? Rex grinned and mocked me. Hearing this, I was so enraged that the arteries on my head were about to burst. Being impulsive and easily provoked was a bad trait of mine. And I was still a bit concerned. The opponent is a greater devil. Even if we had the pet that it was searching for, would things really develop so smoothly? Or rather, I felt that something was wrong. The black magical beast might not be referring to the rookie killer. Never mind. Whatever it is, let's go back to the town to celebrate our success. As Rex ignored my discomfort and continued speaking. I found it. A voice loud enough to drown out Rex's words surrounded us. Part 9 For the moment, I couldn't comprehend what that loud voice was. As everyone stood still, it suddenly appeared. You people. What did you do to Lady Wallback? It was a huge pitch black and glossy body. It should have two bat wings, but there was only one left now. With an air of misfortune, its horns and teeth left a deep impression. There was no mistake. It was that greater devil from before. That devil from the forest charged at us in rage. Hey! Hey! Wait. The rookie killer is still in our hands. Uck. Uck. Exclamation mark. The three people surrounding the rookie killer were knocked off their feet by the devil that suddenly emerged from the forest at the foot of the mountain. They didn't even have the time to draw their weapons. Or rather, as someone who wasn't proficient in melee combat, I couldn't even tell what happened to them. The three of them were scattered into the distance and collapsed on the ground motionlessly. The devil kneeled beside the rookie killer. Lady Wolbach. Please wake up, Lady Wolbach. It kept calling this familiar name. A. Wolbach? Say, Megumin. This is a crisis, right? 
What should we do? Will he just let us go? As I was about to recall that name, a trembling Eonion pulled on my sleeve. Shh! Let's watch what happens next. Maintain a defensive position and slowly move away. Step by step, we increased the distance between us and the devil who was still trying to wake the rookie killer. At this moment, the devil suddenly had a bewildered expression on its face. Since its form looked so fierce, that behavior seemed extremely strange. Hey! 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 This is just a normal rookie killer. What's going on? The devil mumbled to itself and stood up. Its glass-like, lifeless eyes turned on us. Exclamation mark X2. As our eyes met, I felt fear like never before. This fellow was bad news, really bad news. I knew that with just a glance. It was even more powerful than the greater devil Arnis that I fought previously. Suddenly, I remembered. Hey, both of you. What's the deal with this guy? I caught the scent of Lady Wolbach and rushed over. Damn. From a distance, I thought it was Lady Wolbach. The name Wolbach was mentioned by Arnis several times. Anyway, why is Lady Wolbach sent on you? What is your relationship with Lady Wolbach? As we slowly retreated, the devil before us crossed its arms and began to ponder. There was no mistake. This devil was after my familiar, Komiusuk. I wanted to say that was my familiar, but now wasn't the time to be happy. We must find a way out of this situation somehow. Just when I held onto my staff and slowly started my incantation. The devil closed the distance between us with a speed that should be impossible for its size. Hmm. The scent is extremely strong on you. And it's fresh. It should be from about this morning. The devil sniffed at my clothes. Its scary face came close to me, making me want to flee in fear. As the devil sniffed all over my body, I remembered Komiusuk was climbing all over me this morning. When I return, I should bundle that fur ball up. Hey, say something. By the way, I think we've met before. You are the crimson demons I encountered in the forest, right? Hearing the devil's question, Ionion, and I did not answer, but merely nodded. The devil saw our reactions and nodded in satisfaction. Is that so? The seal was previously in the Crimson Demon Village, and you are both Crimson Demons. Yes. This is possible. This is definitely possible. I didn't know what was possible, but if that fearsome face came close again, I'll cry, so please stop. Or rather, Ionion was already on the verge of tears beside me. Hey, you. Since you are a crimson demon, you should know about Lady Wolbach, right? Don't tell me otherwise. You should have met her this morning. Feeling the killing intent of the devil, I sensed that our lives were in danger. Wh why do you all keep calling my Komiosuk a weird name like Wolbach? You must have made a mistake. Let me find a cute black kitten for you. Please don't bother my Komiusuk anymore. Ch Komiusuk? What the heck is Komiusuk no, wait. I've heard this name somewhere before. Where was it? Oh, right. It was that brat. Who was that brat? As Yun and I were paralyzed by fear, the devil seemed to have resolved its confusion. It shook its head several times and sighed. If possible, I don't want to antagonize crimson demons. Otherwise, that brat might pounce over to bite me. Now, listen up. Bring Lady Wolbach here. If you don't know who Lady Wolbach is, bring everyone you were in contact with this morning. How about it? I will make a deal with you. Bring Lady Wolbach to me and I will not harm any of you. Of course, it includes everyone in that town too. Why you want us to trust the words of a devil? Eonion, who was scared out of her wits, tightly gripped her staff after knowing that the enemy's target was Komiusuk. Hold on, we devils do not break our contracts. This is an unbreakable rule for us devils. And I intend to communicate with you people in a very friendly manner. Although I did make that strange magic sword guy suffer, but that was inevitable. That guy was on our hit list after all. I reached out to stop Yunion, who was about to start her incantation. Hit list? You mean the famous magic sword user in the town is wanted by name among devils? 
The devil answered my query. Yes. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Hoost. I'm the aid of Lady Wolbag, the greater devil Hoost. A magic sword user who could destroy gods would be considered a dangerous target anywhere, right? Part 10 Eonion pulled the reins of the horse. Hey, are you going to deal with that devil? I haven't decided. But if giving that furball away could solve the problem, it might not be such a bad option. After all, the opponent wasn't an ordinary greater devil, but an aid to the evil god. If we made matters worse, we would surely end up like that defeated magic sword user. Eonion fell silent after hearing what I said. Rex and the others were still sleeping in the cage that was being pulled along by the horse. The two of us couldn't move them to the town by ourselves, so we could only put them in the cage. The three of them were still unconscious. Master adventurers were instantly defeated without being able to counter-attack. The deal was to give it Komiyusuk and it wouldn't harm us and the town. In other words, if we didn't accept the deal, even the innocent people in the town would be harmed. This time, we couldn't expect someone to help out at the right time, like what happened in the Crimson Demon Village or Alkan Risha. Even Rex's party was defeated, the people in Axel who could oppose that devil were. The horse pulled the cage along as its wheels made a rumbling sound. As we were about to reach the town gate, Eonion said with an unrepentant look. Hey, Megumin. Let's ignore what that devil said. It's a devil, so it might not keep to the agreement. Besides, even if they are rookies, there are still a lot of reliable adventurers in town, so. Eonion made a rare opinion this time. She was a kind and righteous person who would help others even if it caused harm to herself. She must have accumulated quite a bit of experience and grown. Let's leave aside whether it was in a good way or not. She was a bit wiser now about the ways of the world, but I was still worried that she would befriend delinquents in the future. I didn't reply. After passing through the main gate, I glanced to the side of the road. The two people that I often run into were happily swinging their picks today. If I ran away, this unreliable duo at the town gate, who were living happily and peacefully every day, would surely be dragged into the mess. My hand that was holding the staff unconsciously strengthened its grip. Interlude, Scene 3 A lonely girl who was awakened. Previously, an unusual event finally happened, even an Axis cultist rejected me when I offered to join their cult. If it was the old me, I would have been depressed when something like that happened. Now, I merely stayed at my reserved spot in the corner of the Adventurer's Guild. In other words, do not try to solve a problem in a single move. It is better to investigate the causes of the problem and remove the obstacles one by one, right? That's right, my disciple. If you desire speed too much, you won't reach your destination. Work at it steadily and things will be unexpectedly easy to resolve and received a lecture from someone I now regarded as a mentor. But, mentor. I don't even know what the reasons are. My mentor gave me a calming smile as I remained moody. Leave it to me. Let's think about it together. No problem, it'll be successful. I'm thirsty after talking so much. Can I have some beer? Yes, go ahead. My mentor ordered a mug of beer and happily finished it in one gulp. Ha, huh, where were we? Ah, right. You couldn't find any companions. Yes. I can't take the initiative to talk to strangers. How can I be like you? To be able to talk casually with anyone? My mentor was rather famous in the guild, or at least a lot of people would recognize him. Well, you can do it while drunk. Alcohol is a good thing. Alcohol can bring delights to life, my disciple. Can I have another mug? as you wish. But, mentor, I think I'm still too young to drink beer. Is there any other way? My mentor ordered his nth mug of beer for today. He took a sip and breathed out. Other way, huh? Okay, wait a bit. I think I will have a good idea after finishing this mug. Mentor, have another mug. An hour later. I can't drink any more. Mentor, can you tell me now? How can I make friends and companions? I shook my drunk mentor. He said while still sprawled on the table. 
even if you ask me that. Right. Little girl, you look well developed. If you wear clothes that exposed more cleavage, using sexiness. My mentor raised his head and grinned, then his entire body suddenly shivered. No, no, no. It's a joke. I'm just joking. I saw that you are earnestly listening to me, so I wanted to test if you will really accept my opinion. Of course, it's also a little joke that I will teach you if you buy me a drink. I will pay for my drinks. I will even pay for yours. That doesn't matter. A. S. Sorry. Don't be so angry. Your eyes are turning red. I was overdoing it. I'm really sorry. As I slammed on the table, my mentor said fearfully. But this wasn't what I wanted to ask. That doesn't matter. Mentor, please tell me how I can make friends and companions. Please, I'm very frustrated. I implore you. E even if you implore me like this. As I was getting emotional, my eyes had already turned crimson, but I couldn't care about that now. It was so hard to find a consultant, so I wouldn't let him escape. Uh. On the notice board. Notice board? My mentor whispered in significant shock. Make a post on the notice board to say, say that you are looking for friends and you will pay for your friends' expenses. Or such. Eam joking. I will think seriously. I'm very sorry. Before my mentor could finish, I pulled on his sleeve causing his voice to reach a higher pitch. He was on the verge of tears. Thank you very much for your guidance. This is not a bad idea. I will try it out. A. After coming up with such a good idea, my mentor cried out in surprise for some reason. Chapter 4 Plus Interlude, Explosive Girl of Axel Part 1 Fortunately, Rex and the others weren't badly hurt from Hoost's attack. After sending them to the Eris Church, we went to the Adventurers Guild. Fine. Megumin, listen to me. Devils are evil and cunning. They are the most untrustworthy creatures in the world. You must have heard of it, right? The famous story about exchanging one's soul for three wishes. Supposedly, several mages lost their souls without having their wishes properly granted. I had already made my decision. The deal with that fellow is definitely unreliable. Once you hand Komiusuk over, he will immediately go back on his word. For now, I needed to deal with this. Megumin, your type of character is the best prey in the eyes of devils. I feel that if he says to you, let me grant you the power of darkness, you would blindly follow that devil. This wench had been one-sidedly lecturing me all this while. I don't want to hear it from someone who would blindly follow a stranger after being treated gently. What is the meaning of this? I'm the top genius of the Crimson Demon Village. I don't need to be lectured by the lonely girl who is forever number two. I know all those things. Lonely girl who is forever number two. Eonion was on the verge of tears as she strangled me. After I disengaged from her with some effort, I reached out my hand to calm her down. W. Wait. This is a big misunderstanding. I exaggerated when I said lonely girl. After all, since arriving in the town, you have gotten to know a strange old man and a guy who flirts with girls in broad daylight. You have all kinds of friends. I'll upgrade you to easy girl who is forever number two. I think lonely girl is better. I thought about my own circumstances. I held Union's weeping face with both hands and said. Okay, let's have a chat. I should find some time to deal with your social awkwardness. If I keep ignoring it, I feel like you will make some delinquent friends. I said as I opened the door to the Adventurers Guild together with Union, who was still snuffling. In summary, Rex's party was defeated by that devil. What should we do now? X3. My report sent the guild staff into a panic. I dragged Union to a table further in the guild. Okay. As expected, we can't depend on the guild right now. Let's evaluate our current situation. Eonion and I started our duo strategy meeting at a table in the corner. Current situation. The two most powerful parties in the town were defeated. The life-saving archpriest can't be found. The country and other cities are on high alert because Adullahan, a general of the Demon King's army, is currently active. Thus, they cannot send any reinforcements. 
And finally, that devil. Is called Hoost? Anyway, there is no deadline for our response and trade, but I feel he won't just patiently wait. Eonian said with a painful expression. Since there would be no reinforcements from other cities, the situation wouldn't improve if we ignore the issue. And the life-saving archpriest could not be found. Then. Then the only option left is handing Komyusuk over. But I object strongly to this. Even I have developed some feelings for that little one. We can't hand it over so easily. Eonion angrily said and suddenly picked up Komyusuk, who was scratching itself on the table. I was puzzled by her. You really misunderstood. I never said I agreed to the deal. A. B. But on the way back to the town, you looked troubled and were deep in thought. Ah, could it be? Oh, please. How could I possibly yield to threats? Crimson demons always accept a direct challenge. I have made my resolve. That is. The resolve to defeat that devil. But even powerful parties like those of the famous magic sword user and Rex San were easily defeated. And you were so frightened, when we first met that fellow. Megumin, you are just one step away from being an idiot. Surely you realize the difference in power between yourself and the opponent? Why are you being so sarcastic? It's obvious that the devil is very powerful. It is probably even greater than Arnis. But I have a way to destroy that devil. Or rather, with that legendary archpriest missing, I'm the only one in this town who can oppose that devil. Hearing my words, Eonion clenched her fists in silence. Then she slammed the table and stood up. I, I don't care any more. Megumin, you idiot. Uck. As Eonion was about to run off somewhere, I pulled on her cloak, causing her to turn back. I smiled gleefully at Eonion who was coughing in confusion. We are friends, right? You are asking me to help? You want me to help, right? We are rivals, not friends. If you think that I will obediently play along just because you say we are friends, then you are wrong. I do feel a little happy about it, but it's not like I like it. Part 2 I came to a certain place together with Yun Yun, who was still pouting. I'm not a fool. I wouldn't think of directly challenging that kind of enemy. Thus, I need to acquire some war funds first. War funds? But isn't this where we live? Yes. This was our usual hotel. It's slightly dangerous, so you shouldn't come. Please wait nearby. Question mark I don't mind, but if there's danger. No. Essay, Megumin. How do you intend to get war funds? It's best for you not to ask. Then, I'm going. W. Wait. Could it be that you are really going to use your body? Hearing Union's voice behind me, I walked upstairs to a certain room in the hotel. Then I took a deep breath before the door. I strengthened my resolve and knocked twice on the door. A familiar voice came from within. Please enter. I opened the door and saw Cecily sprawling on the bed and munching on some snacks. As I entered the room, I clasped my hands together and said, Cecily One Chan, please give me some money. Tell your One Chan how much you need. What do you want to buy? A house? Want to buy a house and live together with One Chan? No problem. Watch as I use my charms to seduce some rich adventurers. I hurriedly stopped Cecily who was about to rush out of the room. Nothing as exaggerated as buying a house. No. I want to defeat that devil, so I need some war funds. I remember you said that if that devil is defeated, there's a reward of ten million, right? Can I borrow a bit of that money? I did say that before. Although I was the one who made the request, I think it's better to give up now. I received additional information on that devil. Just earlier, one of the more powerful parties in this town was attacked by it and was sent to the Eris Church. Cecily said with a troubled look. I only just reported that to the guild, yet you have already heard of it. This means that the people in the town are that agitated. No. I saw the wounded being healed when I went to throw rocks at the Eris church. I pestered them and said I wouldn't leave until they told me what happened, so they gave me all the details. Wait. I can't endure it even if you shower love on me like this. Sigh. On a chan, please be more amiable. Don't make the situation worse. 
Cough, really. You are being coy again, but I don't dislike it though. Cecily tried to pacify me as I strangled her by handing something over. Who is being coy? You should. What's this? She handed over a heavy sack. Ten million heiress. A. Hearing her casual words, I stared dumbly at the sack in my hand. Why is this really okay? You gave it to me so easily. Aren't you afraid I'll run off with it? Cecily listened to my queries. I am a holy person, after all. I have some confidence in judging the character of people. She said with a gentle smile. Th then, didn't you consider what would happen if I lose? By the way, did the sun rise from the west? You suddenly have such an attitude. I don't even know how to respond. Uck. She then hugged me tightly. No problem. As a priestess of the Axis cult, I, Cecily, make this guarantee. You will definitely win. That's right. A cute and reliable Megumin can't possibly lose to devils. Oh on a chan. What should I do? I was a bit upset about it, but my eyes still became wet. Actually, I was uneasy about challenging such a powerful devil. At this time, I unexpectedly received such gentle words from someone who was usually unreliable. All right, why don't you take a look inside the sack? Put them to good use now. I struggled to hold back my tears and opened the heavy sack. There wasn't any gold coin inside. It was full of rocks and a piece of paper which said, just joking. Ha! Megumin san is so shocked that she's in tears. It's really too cute. Ha ha. Cough, seriously, how can you be so cute? Too bad, that's. Ah, it's my fault. I went overboard with the joke. I will apologize, so please stop throwing rocks. Part 3 After going downstairs, I saw Eonion worriedly pacing back and forth. What are you doing, Eonion? I told you to wait nearby. Megumin. You entered the hotel after leaving some meaningful statements, so I was very worried. Wait. Why are you crying? After being noticed by Eonion, I quickly wiped my tears away. Th this is. No nothing. Why is the strong-willed Megumin crying? What happened? You used that to acquire the so-called war funds? I held up the sack of Eris with both hands and shook it for Eonion to see. Here is ten million Eris. What did you do to earn a large sum of money? Eonion was on the verge of tears for some reason as she cried out in despair. Please stop and calm down. This is just a practical joke since I trust you. I knew that you would surely resolve this issue. So I specially prepared this to pull a prank on you and I give you the thank you gift. Ah. Stop, stop. Don't be angry. I thought of what Cecily said earlier. I don't want to talk about it. Megumin, Megumin has been sullied. I walked out of the hotel in exhaustion. I didn't even have the mood to explain things to Eonion, who was having some strange misunderstanding. Say, Megumin. Whatever happened has happened. Your reason for needing money is to defeat the devil that threatens the town. This is a righteous cause, so there is no shame in whatever method you use to get money. Nobody will look down on you. Dot. Yes. After all, the one who is depressed is Megumin. Even the strong-willed Megumin would cry, so. So. Uck. You're too irritating. Really? Why must you have such a wild imagination? You're always like that. I didn't sell my body. I only said something embarrassing to someone who has good feelings towards me. All we ended up doing was a hug. You said something embarrassing and was hugged? I I think this was too much already, but was that all that happened? Would Megumin cry merely because of that? I considered what she said. After that, I was overwhelmed by the sudden gentle treatment, and then I was somewhat played. This is rather embarrassing, so I'd rather not talk about it. As I thought. I should just ignore it. Anyway, since I got the war funds, we should make use of them efficiently to set up the fight in our favor. I need to go somewhere, so take this with you to the magic tool shop. Buy everything you think is useful. If you think there are other expenditures that benefit the fight, spend as you wish. 
and buy a black cat doll for me. I said and stuffed the sack full of gold coins into her hands. A. E. Even if you say so, suddenly giving me so much money. And I left the rest to the bewildered Eonian. Part 4. Please. If we get the reward, you can have it all. Do don't be unreasonable. It's that devil, right? Even the magic sword guy and Rex's party were defeated, this is too much for us. I returned to the adventurers' guild and approached various adventurers. Ah. Over there. I forgot your names, but we were in a party once. Then, you should know how powerful I can be. Want to defeat the devil together? At least remember our names. No, no. We refused precisely because we were in a party before. I feel like we would be dragged into your magic as well. All right. And it's all over if your magic misses. We can't go along with such a dangerous gambit. Da damn it. Ah. You there. Need an excellent mage? I'm a crimson demon. I can be useful, so please help me. No way. We can't handle that devil. And we're small fries with basic jobs. If a crimson demon archwizard joined us, the party would be somewhat unbalanced, right? Even after I discarded my self-respect and begged everyone, nobody accepted my request. This was because everyone knew of my bad reputation and the power of that devil. My plan was to let Eonion acquire some magic items that could restrict movements and then employ some defensive adventurers. If Hoost's movement could be restricted, it would be ideal. Even if we couldn't defeat it, we could buy the employed adventurers some time and increase the distance for a one-hit kill. I thought that would work, but I was too naive. At this moment. Ah. Uh, someone spoke to me fearfully from behind. You are the one who is always with that girl called Eonion, right? We are not that strong, but if it is possible. I quickly turned towards the speaker. Power doesn't matter as long as you are willing to help. Oh, it's you people. I'm looking for adventurers. This is too dangerous for commoners, so please stand aside. And don't come close to Eonion again. It was the idle uncle who would be drunk in broad daylight and approach Eonion for chat, as well as other similar men. As I drove them off, the guild became noisy. What was happening? I asked a random person nearby. Ah. Uh, what is happening? Hmm. It's the matter with that devil. Some weirdos declared they wanted to defeat it. It was just a party with two members, yet they suddenly rushed out of the guild. Whoa. W.H. What are you doing? Where are they? What do those two people look like? Oh one of them should be a crusader. The other should be a thief. Both of them were shouting scary things like devils should die and for a devil to come boldly to this town, watch me kill it. They went off after that. If I came earlier, I could have invited those people. No. Perhaps they would unexpectedly defeat it. Sigh. In the end, I couldn't find anyone. This is going to be difficult. Part 5. How are things on your side? Found any useful magic items? I went to various magic tool shops and bought several powerful magic items recommended by the shops, but... Eonion said and took out some magic items that looked really familiar. All of these looked like they came from our village. After all, the magic items created in our village are considered high quality. It was somewhat discomforting to buy the magic items at full prices when we could have acquired them easily back in our village. However, since the products were made by our villagers, we could be assured of the quality. By the way, where did you go? Were you preparing for the fight? Hearing this, I looked away. I wanted to find some helpers. But my recent fame had an opposite effect. Nobody responded. It's because of your usual behavior. What should we do? Without a vanguard, we mages will be killed in an instant. I picked up Komiusuk, who was pestering me at my feet, as if I wanted to avoid reality. Who do you think I am? Yes. I'm the top mage of the Crimson Demons, user of explosion magic. I could finish that kind of devil off before it comes close. Ah. Well done, Union. Isn't this an invisibility spell scroll? It would be easy with this. I bought it anyway, 
but I don't know if it would really be useful. The opponent is a greater devil. Party tricks like becoming invisible by deflecting light may be exposed any time. Eonion mumbled, but this was better than having no plan of action. I carefully kept the scroll. And the black cat doll that you asked for. I don't know how this thing would be useful. I tied Komiyusuk in my arms to the doll. Hey! In this way, the doll will have Komiyusuk's scent. After that, we will place this in the middle of somewhere nobody would come. I will hide with the invisibility scroll. When the devil is lured over by the doll, boom. I wonder, will it really be so easy? Say, it's still not too late. Let's escape to another town. It was unbelievable that the kind-hearted Ionion would become so callous in less than a year. This kid had grown in various ways before I noticed. Let's disregard whether it was in a good direction or not. I showed Komiusuk, who was bound to the doll, to the anxious Ionion and said. It will be successful. You are not the only one, who has developed feelings for this shameless furball. Besides. Although it was only for a short time, there are people in this town, who have adventured with me. This incident is because of me and this furball, so I must put an end to it. Watching my silhouette as I made my declaration and turned towards the hotel, Union sighed helplessly. Really? So reckless, so stubborn, and so over-assertive. Stop nagging. You are still a pacifist coward, right? I replied without turning back. There was a sound of someone taking a deep breath. Then. But you have changed a lot this year in terms of individualism and callousness. Ionion seemed to be mumbling something softly. Part 6 After dinner, I returned to my room. I suddenly thought of something and knocked on Cecily's door. One san are you there? Yes. Megumin-san? Please come in. The door isn't locked. After opening the door, I saw Cecily lazily lying on the bed. You look rather tired. Where were you playing after that? So rude. I was motivated by the hard-working Megumin, so I did some rare work too. Oh really? So may I ask what kind of work was it? Ah. Uh, I went to the heiress church again. Enough. I was stupid to even ask that question. Wait. I really worked hard today? I can only use simple healing magic, but in other words, this is my sole area of expertise. Then. Enough. Then you waited for the wounded to arrive at the heiress church and ran over to intercept their business, right? Megumin Sam, you're too much. That. That. A. Eh? Actually, that isn't a bad idea. Let me write it down. Do it later. I have something to discuss with you. I showed Komiusuk, who was released from the back cat doll, to Cecily as she was busy taking notes. I wish to leave this little one with you for a while. I don't mind, but isn't this the symbol of your cuteness? Is it okay to leave it with me? It's not a symbol. It's my familiar. We may start the fight tomorrow, so I'm making this request, just to be safe. I put Komiusuk down on the bed that Cecily was lying on. Cecily ruffled its head as Komiusuk sniffed at her as if intrigued by a stranger's scent. This is a small matter. Leave it to me. I'll teach it some tricks while I take care of it. Hmm. How about a fire-breathing cat? P.L. Please don't. Don't teach it strange things. Then, One-san. Call me Cecily One-chan. See Cecily, I'll leave that kid to you. Cecily seemingly accepted my ultimate compromise. I watched Cecily play with Komiusuk on the bed and left her room. Ah? Megumin, what are you doing over here? After leaving Cecily's room, I ran into Ionion as she was about to leave for somewhere. There is an acquaintance in this room. Ionion, where are you going? It's quite late out. Hearing my question, she looked away suspiciously. L look. We are adventurers too, so I thought it'd be nice to visit the tavern at night. Ionion has become a delinquent. No. It's not like that. I'm just a bit curious. Ionion hurriedly responded as I cried out in surprise. Let's go together then. 
Letting the easily persuaded Union go to the tavern alone at night is like letting a group of onion ducks walk past me when I haven't used explosion magic for the day. T. There's no need to come along. Look. I've stayed overnight at the guild before. Nothing happened. Ionion insisted on refusing my company. Then, see you tomorrow. And rushed out into the streets at night. Part 7. I can't sleep. The battle will be tomorrow. Perhaps due to the nervousness, I found it difficult to fall asleep. Just a year ago, I was still peacefully going to school. How did I end up having to fight a greater devil? Thinking back, I had experienced a lot of adventures in the past year. Breaking the seal of the evil god, defeating the evil god's minions, and fighting with the greater devil Arnis. And now, I'm defending the town of Axel and preparing to fight with the devil Hoost. There probably won't be such a major event in my adventurer life from now on. What surprised me was that adventurers were people who frequently took on normal quests to make ends meet. The odd party that would be willing to recruit me probably did not exist. Even if Hoost was defeated successfully, I would still. I thought about this in the darkness and tucked my head beneath the blanket. This wasn't good. My thoughts were just becoming more negative. Truly, was I becoming more negative because of tomorrow's event? As I thought on this, I noticed the sky was starting to brighten outside the window. Or rather, it was today. I was so wide awake that I couldn't sleep at all. I felt as if I had forgotten something very important. What was it? I said to myself, something very important. A. R. I forgot my daily practice of using explosion magic. No wonder I couldn't sleep. Just as I was about to get up. Unlock. A whisper was heard from outside the door. The room became unlocked. What kind of pervert would pry open the room's lock at this time? Cecily immediately flashed across my mind. I turned my back to the door and pretended to sleep as I clenched my fist to strike at the intruder at any moment. Finally, the door was gently opened. Megumin, are you asleep? I heard a soft, familiar voice. My clenched fist relaxed. The intruder was Eonium. What was this about? Why would she sneak into my room at this time? It didn't matter if I was awake, but for some reason, I chose to pretend to be asleep. Megumin. You are very amazing. Faced with that devil, you still refuse to run away. If it was me, I definitely would be so troubled that I couldn't sleep. I shouldn't have pretended to be asleep. After hearing this, it was more awkward for me to get up now. As I was regretting my decision, Union softly continued her monologue. Can I be honest? When you learned explosion magic, I thought this so-called top genius was mentally retarded. I wanted to pounce at her. And then, when you were helping those Axis cultists in Alcan Risha with their foolish recruitment schemes. Really, really. At this point, Union's voice ceased. Those times were my dark history, so I really wish you'd stop reminding me of it. But. Since my back was facing her in the dark, I wondered what Eonion's expressions were like now. But with only the useless explosion magic, you destroyed the evil god's minions in one shot and then defeated Arnis. Now, you even plan to oppose that devil. Although I couldn't see her, her current expression must be. I think the current Megumin is really cool, and really amazing. Must be really bashful. Yes. Just like the current me. If I got up now after hearing her monologue, Eonium would receive a deep psychological scar. But if I didn't say anything after hearing such an honest confession, it was also. But Megumin, you should know it too. Even if you hide with invisibility magic to use explosion magic, your position would still be exposed by your mana leakage. At this moment, I couldn't say that I didn't even think about that. As I was feeling embarrassed and dispirited. Therefore, Eonion's tone suddenly changed. So that I can continue to be Megumin's rival, I will borrow this. Eonion said softly in a serious tone and picked something up. Even if I couldn't see, I could guess what it was. It was probably the doll with Komiosuke's scent, prepared as a bait for Hoost. Did she intend to lure and defeat Hoost before I could arrive? But Eonion shouldn't have the finishing move to defeat Hoost. 
no matter what, it was too reckless for her to do it alone. I was in the tavern of the Adventurers Guild until now. For the first time, I took the initiative to ask to join a party. Dot. And it was one of the top adventuring parties in the town. Rex Sands Party. When I said I wanted revenge on that devil, they readily agreed. Those people? But they should be badly wounded. If I was alone, I probably wouldn't have the courage to challenge it, but like this. I listened to Ionion's confession and considered when I should get up. Then I'm leaving. It was about time. I pretended to wake up and greeted her sleepily. Because you are my most important friend. I knew we would lose, so I can't let you go on a suicide mission. Therefore. I was speechless. As I considered how I should respond. Sorry, Megumin. Following the soft-spoken apology. Sleep. An irresistible sleep magic assaulted me. Part 8. Dash. I jumped out of my bed as I woke up. As I quickly took note of my surroundings, I noticed that the sky outside was completely bright. Then, as evidence that it was not a dream, the black cat doll at the side of my bed was missing. You really did it. You were scheming against me right from the start, Union. Before anything else, the first thought in my mind was that I was upset at falling for her trap. She left early with a powerful party to defeat Hoost because she was worried about me. Normally, this might be a very good thing, but for me. For a crimson demon, it's the greatest insult to steal someone else's glory. Don't think this is over. As I was shouting, I grabbed my staff and rushed out of the room. Uck! Exclamation mark. As I rushed out of the door, I nearly ran right into Cecily. One san, sorry. The situation is urgent, I have to hurry. I'll leave first, today. Why are you hurrying? What happened that was so urgent? I didn't have time to explain to Cecily, but it was still rude to ignore her when she was right in front of me. I suppressed my urge to hurry and explained the situation. Cecily tilted her head. Ah. Uh, the party that went with Megumin San's friend to defeat the devil is led by someone called Rex, right? Question mark yes, that's right. Supposedly, they are one of the more powerful parties in the town. Cecily listened and said. I healed them. She smiled prettily and gave a thumb up. Ah? I healed those people. Look, I said yesterday that I worked hard, right? I went to Eris Church to disturb them and saw those people moaning in pain. What was this? I had a bad premonition. My faith in Lady Aqua was seemingly stronger than any Eris cultist present. The power of the Eris cultists couldn't heal those people enough for them to move. Before the Eris cultists, I healed them to the point where they could fight if they endured the pain. The dissatisfied looks of those Eris cultists back then were so awesome. So she was responsible for complicating the situation. Even Ionion would not challenge the devil alone without a plan. But. Except for Rex's party, no other party would challenge the devil even if Ionion took the initiative to talk to them. Still, Cecily only healed the wounded, so I couldn't blame her for anything. I can't wait any more. I need to. At this moment, Cecily grabbed my hand as I was about to run off. On a san, I really don't have the time to play with you now. I looked at Cecily's expression and swallowed what I wanted to say. She was mumbling something and looking at me seriously. Finally. May the goddess Aqua bless you. Blessing. A gentle glow came from Cecily's hand. That glow engulfed my body. I can only vaguely remember chants not related to healing. It's great that I could cast it successfully. Cecily smiled and breathed out in relief. Looking at her expression, I could only smile stiffly. Then, I silently thanked this weird One San from the Axis cult. In this urgent situation, I didn't notice that I was panicking. Thanks to this, I was much more relaxed. One Chan. At this time, I wish you can call me Cecily One Chan. I smiled stiffly again. Cecily One Chan. I'm going. Be safe. Part 9. In the plains outside of the town. The giant frogs that are usually hopping around were missing. 
We'll block it again. Please use that spell one more time. Ununderstood. Leave it to me. At this time. If you think you can stop me, then stop me. You annoying bugs. Eoneon and the others were in battle with the devil hoost. Rex, stand back. You're at your limit. Yes. Your right arm is broken, right? Your face is pale. The situation wasn't good, but unexpectedly, Hoos was not without injuries. After losing one wing to the magic sword hero, Hoos currently has minor wounds on its body. And it gave the impression that it was weakened for some reason. Damn. Normally, I should be able to easily finish off such trash. Hoost threatened Terry and Sophie who replaced Rex in the front line while complaining in a tired voice. Then, what should I do? Join the fight now? After becoming invisible with a magic scroll that deflected light, I watched the battle from a distance. Seeing Hoost struggling, I started to think victory might be possible. I wanted to rush into battle, but it was probably better to observe for a while. Or rather, this was not a good moment for a crimson demon to debut. It was fine to come forth at a dangerous moment, but doing so when one side was already winning was too lame. At this time, Union held out her staff in one hand and gripped a small rock tightly in the other. Lightning! She shouted in a resounding voice. The small rock in her hand disintegrated. Ah, it hurts. This magic is so annoying. Damn! After losing almost half of my power, I don't really want to use too much mana, but... After being attacked by lightning, Hoost raised its arms up high. Go to hell. Inferno. It brought its arms down as it shouted. But Eonion seemed to be expecting this. She released her staff and opened a scroll towards it with both hands. Magic Canceller. The spell that was supposed to emerge from Hoost's hands did not appear. At the same time, the scroll before Ionion turned black and was torn into pieces. It seemed the magic in the scroll worked, cancelling Hoost's spell. Ionion picked up the staff at her feet and took out a rock from her pocket. The rock was manatite. This rock was filled with magic power, but its price depended on its size and purity. Although various expensive magic items were used, Ionion managed to fight on par with Hoost. So annoying. That's why I said I don't want to deal with you crimson demons. You bastards fight whichever way you like. Gruh. Time to apply some force. The enraged hoost closed the distance with an agility that seemed completely at odds with its huge body. Noticing the situation, Sophie and Terry came in front of Ionion to block it. Everyone, use plan F. Ionion shouted and retrieved a scroll in preparation. No problem here. Okay, let's do it. I'm ready. That was probably a code word for a battle plan that she and Rex agreed on. What is this now? You've been playing all kinds of tricks right from the start. If you can do it, then. Who's charged forward without concern? At the same time, Rex and the others covered their faces. As my eyes opened wide to see what they were up to. Flash. Following Union's voice, there was a bright flash of light. Ha! We devils do not see with our eyes. This body is just for temporary use. This trick is useless. D damn, uck. Sophie? Uck. From the conversation, the two frontline fighters other than Rex had collapsed. There were then two sounds of something falling on the ground. Damn. It had no effect? I thought I heard a soft cry of agony. The evidence was Rex's anguished suspicion. By the way. Uck. Uck. The soft cry of agony was probably referring to me as I rolled on the ground while covering my eyes. I pressed my eyes, which were injured by the light, and squatted on the ground, trembling. Okay. There are only the two of you left. Do you still have something else up your sleeve? I heard Hoost's arrogant voice. I painfully opened my eyes and looked at Union opposing Hoos directly. Rex stood at her side, holding his great sword in his left hand. The other two were on the ground. That guy named Terry or something was unconscious. As if to answer Hoost's provocations, Union quietly said to Rex. 
Rex San. Although I don't know if it will be effective against a devil with high magic resistance. I still have one more magic item. I know. What should I do? What should I do? The mood had become even harder for me to debut. Both of them endured the tense mood, then finally said something to each other that was too soft for me to hear. Oh. You still have tricks? Good, try it. If you attack, there will be a fault in your defense. I wonder which of you will fall first if you fail. Although Hoost mocked Eonion, its yellow eyes showed signs of caution. At this time, Eonion took out a bottle. Question mark magic potion. Hoost charged at Eonion again as she drank the potion. The rest is up to you, little girl. Rex shouted and threw his great sword at Hoost. Exclamation mark. As if surprised by the enemy tossing away his weapon, Hoost was slow to react as its hardened arm blocked the great sword. Then, it used its broad arm to smash Rex, sending him flying away. Paralyze. At the same time, Eonion finished her potion and used a spell infused with all her magic power. The magic she used was to temporarily paralyze an opponent. But since devils use temporary bodies anyway, paralysis was. Ha! You are a crimson demon, yet you don't know this. To us devils, paralysis is? Boost gloated before trailing off. Paralysis is useless against devils. I know it very well. After all, my study results were number two in class. The potion Eonion drank was commonly known as magic potion. Drinking it could increase the power of specific spells or directly change the spell's effect. Since Hoost couldn't move, the magic was probably effective. Eonion didn't use this at the start because she was unsure if it would be effective. But Eonion won the gamble. Then, it would be finished if someone dealt the final blow to the paralyzed Hoost. TSK. How powerful was that magic potion to be effective against me? But your magic power is almost depleted, right? Can you finish me off with your remaining magic power before the paralysis ends? A mere paralysis would last at most a few minutes. If its effect ends abruptly, the situation will turn in my favor. As if it realized it was in real danger, Hoost was suddenly very talkative. Let's negotiate. How about both sides retreat today? You want to hurry up and treat those three people too, right? If both sides are retreating, even when the paralysis ends, I guarantee that I won't attack any more today. You may not believe me, but we devils definitely do not break our promises. But Eonion did not answer as if she couldn't believe the devil. Faced with her silence, Hoost became anxious and said, Aren't you the second in class? Then you should have learned that devils do not break promises and contracts. It shouted anxiously and angrily. That's not it. At this time, Eonion softly said while trembling. By the way, Eonion hadn't moved from that spot for a while. That's not it? What's not it? Hoost asked in confusion. Ah! Uh, the deal you mentioned. I can accept it. Ah! Uh, both sides will retreat today, then. Ah! Uh, Eonion said in a stuttering voice. At this time. Hey! Wa wait! Rex said from the side. That's right. Forget about us. Terry joined in as he regained consciousness. We are fine. Quick! Give it the final blow. As if those words were the final blow itself, even Sophie urged her on. But I already understood Eonion's current situation. Ah, uh, say? They looked at the unmoving Eonion. Hey, you. Are you? Hoost also noticed it. Could it be that you are paralyzed as well? Its question resulted in an awkward silence. Finally, only Hoost's laughter echoed across the plains. You. You crimson demons. I'm not good at dealing with you people, but I really can't bring myself to hate you. How did you even manage to paralyze yourself? Hoost said and laughed out loud. Eonion replied on the verge of tears. I don't know either. I got that potion from the last magic item shop I visited. A beautiful One San said. This is a potion that will enhance the power of paralysis and area of effect. She then sold it to me at a very cheap price. Normally, 
I should scold her for doing such a foolish thing. But after looking at the bottle at her feet, I hugged my head uncontrollably. That idiotic product that would drag its user down as well was probably created by my father. Ha! This joke is killing me. Then? What do you intend to do? I'll say it again. You might see me as an untrustworthy devil, but do you still want to make a deal or not? Look, I can't move now, so is it okay not to give me the final blow? I had a good laugh, so if you want to make a deal now, I can still let you leave. Hoost mocked her as it remained paralyzed. Rex and the others were still rather imposing earlier, but after hearing that conversation, they couldn't say anything else. It was time. Uck. I is that a challenge? Cree Crimson Demons never back down from a fight. Even if I can't win, I will? Eonion stopped in mid-sentence while she was on the verge of tears. Uck. WHWH where did you come from? Hoost had the same reaction. After dispelling the scroll's effect, I suddenly appeared. Its paralyzed body became even stiffer. It wore an expression of surprise. No one can move anymore? It was so rude to leave me behind. Hi. I'm a passing arc mage. You people stand aside. I'm going to have a good time. Part 10. You you are. The mage who's all talk and no action. Hey. What are you doing here? It's dangerous, run. As if his pain was numbed, Rex lay motionlessly on the ground and warned me anxiously. Megumin? A frightful voice said. As if she was a kid afraid of being lectured, the paralyzed Eonian said and observed my mood. I didn't reply. Last night, I forgot my daily practice of using explosion magic. When I was about to get out of bed, someone used sleep on me. Exclamation mark you 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 were awake? Wait. Were you awake the whole time? I raised my staff before me and pointed at Hoost. Therefore, the magic power from yesterday was entirely wasted. I'm currently looking for a good target to use magic. Hey, hey. You. That I. W wait. Okay, I understand. Calm down. Calm down first. Hoost shouted at me in a stuttering voice. Megumin, please answer me. When were you awake? Last night, when did you start listening? At the same time, Eonion was shouting on the verge of tears. When did I start listening? Well, it was when the door was unlocked and you asked, Megumin, are you asleep? No. Uck. Eonion cried out in anguish as she blushed deeply. She wanted to run away from here, but she couldn't move since she was paralyzed. Next is, you dare to torture my amusing compatriot who made embarrassing confessions regardless of whether the other party was awake or not. She even managed to paralyze herself. Stop it. Don't say any more. Don't say any more. I was wrong, please stop. You're angry because I came early to the fight after making you sleep. Or because I took the doll? I'm sorry, so please don't say any more. She is a shy girl who would say things like I think the current Megumin is really cool, and really powerful when she thinks nobody is listening. Stop. No. And because you are my most important friend, yes. After hearing her confessions, I cannot stand by and ignore this. Kill me. I can't run away or even kill myself now that I'm paralyzed, so give me a quick clean death. I can't live like this. Just kill me already. Eonion cried like she was about to have a mental breakdown. For some reason, Hoost was happily looking at us. Then Rex, who remained silent all this while, shouted. Hey, mage who is all talk and no action. How long are you going to keep fooling around? If you want to do something, hurry up and... WH what is this? Hey, what's happening? Is something wrong? In this situation, those words were unnecessary. While I was making psychological attacks on Eonion, I was also gathering magic power. My magic is a massive skill that requires charging. This situation is a match made in heaven for me. When you say charging, you mean you need to continue charging beyond this? I've lived for a long time, but I've still almost never seen such a frightening amount of magic power. Hoost said somewhat helplessly, and yet slightly happily as well. 
Next is my finishing move, which is also the magic that defeated your comrade Arnis. I see. You defeated her. From the magnitude of this magic power, I don't think that fellow could have survived it either. Perhaps because I didn't use magic yesterday, the amount of magic power emitted today was abnormally high. The unrefined magic power spilled forth, causing the surrounding atmosphere to tremble slightly, accompanied by some static electricity. W.H. What is this? Hey, what is happening? I have been an adventurer for so many years, yet I've never seen this kind of magic. Rex mumbled to himself as he scanned the surroundings. What are you trying to do? Really? Aren't you a mage who is all talk and no action? He then turned his pale face to me and asked timidly. I didn't respond. I merely smiled bitterly and said. This is it. My finishing move, explosion magic. Upon hearing the words explosion magic, Hoost sighed deeply like a human. It was difficult to read the expression of a devil, but it was probably smiling bitterly too. Seriously. If I was at full health, I might have been able to somehow endure this attack. If only I wasn't assaulted by that ridiculously durable crusader and that thief yesterday. Hoost still couldn't move. After that, I was pissed off about being injured, so I decided to attack the town. A weird woman, who was repairing the town wall suddenly slapped me in the face with a vicious anti-devil spell. It grumbled as if it was making a confession. This means one less life then. My contract with Lady Wolbach will also be forcibly broken. I'll happily regain my freedom. I'm really impressed. Maybe one day that brat will really summon me back. Then it happily said some strange things. Explosion. Really? What is wrong with this town? It's full of weird people. They are all too unorthodox. Of course, as someone who uses explosion magic, you are one of them too. What a day. Part 11. Hoost was finally defeated, but after exhausting my magic power, nobody except Eonion could move. It seemed everyone else was brought back on stretchers by the guild staff. That pathetic incident happened yesterday. And now. I've always believed. Yes, I've always believed in you, Megumin San. I've always believed that you would win. I was embraced by Cecily at the hotel entrance, letting her rub her cheek against mine. How should I say this? Eonion was still watching from the side. It was a bit embarrassing. Ah. Uh, One-san. Call me Cecily One-chan. Didn't you already call me that yesterday? One-san. Ah, uh, it's very hot. Isn't it about time you let go? Really? This kid is too coy. Cecily finally let go of me as she spoke such nonsensical words. Then, she silently stared at my face and said with a laugh. But Megumin-san, is this really okay? To give all the reward away. That's right. We gave the reward for defeating Hoos to Rex and the others. Or rather, I was the one who lured Hoos to the forest near the town. More accurately, it was the furball that was still pestering me at my feet right now. No problem. After all, I stole everyone's thunder by dealing the final blow. I wasn't the one who fought that devil and was forced into that situation. You're so cute when you are forcing yourself to act tough. I can tell you really wanted the money. I'm not forcing myself. Really? I just thought that Rex and the others were hurt because of me. Really? You are not honest at all. But I don't dislike that either. I stiffly smiled as Cecily enthusiastically hugged me again. Okay. I'm a bit reluctant, but it's about time I leave. Cecily said as she picked up the luggage on the ground and hung it over her shoulder. Are you going back to Alcanrisha like this? Hearing my question, Cecily showed an expression as if she was a kid plotting a prank. No. I'm on a new journey. I've learned something from this incident. Healing magic alone isn't enough. I learned healing magic only because I was frequently injured when I was messing about. This time, when I blessed you like a real priestess, I suddenly thought, a nickname like powerful and beautiful priestess is better than a mere beauty. This was totally unimportant. And after reaching a certain level as a priest, I will be sent to a town of my preference to support and govern the local church. 
This was actually somewhat important. Onesan, are you planning to be sent to this town? It's a secret. It seemed she was eyeing this place. In any case, don't curl up into a ball and cry because I'm not around, okay? I won't. But I'll still say this. Onesan, take care. After all, you are a beautiful woman if you keep your mouth shut, so don't let bad guys pester you. That's my line. Listen. Be careful when you choose a party. Cecily said and left as suddenly as she came. Then Union, who was watching us so far, said seriously to me. Megumin. Can you follow me outside the town? On the plains outside the town. The giant frogs, which were hiding in fear of Hoost yesterday, were jumping vigorously all over the place. The silhouettes of adventurers hunting the frogs could be seen everywhere on the plains. Here should be fine. At this time, Union, who was walking in front, stopped suddenly. And. My good rival, self-proclaimed top mage of the Crimson Demons. Megumin. Union blushed and pointed at me. My name is Union. As an archwizard who uses intermediate magic, I'll become the chief of the Crimson Demons, next, I'll be going on a journey. Yes, a journey to defeat you, my rival. A journey to learn advanced magic. You didn't call me rival yesterday, because you are my most important friend. Wah! I can't hear you. I can't hear you. La 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 la. Ionion blushed as her eyes were filled with tears. Are you leaving on a journey to cool your head off because you said something embarrassing recently? My brain isn't that damaged. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So somewhat. Just. Just a little bit. And anyway. She retrieved her staff and pointed it at me. Once I've learned advanced magic, we will have a real duel, I'm a bit upset, but Megumin was the one who defeated that devil in the end. I will admit I cannot win against you for now. I feel that it would be difficult to surpass you if I keep hanging around with you. From our duel record so far, I've basically won all the matches. I'm trying to have a serious talk here, so don't interrupt. So how about it? If I learn advanced magic, do you intend to have a proper duel with me? Ionion shouted loudly on the verge of tears. I said to Ionion. Fine. At that time, we'll have a proper duel without any tricks. I smiled to one of my few friends. 22, lies 1L1. Interlude, final scene. The one who would become the chief of the Crimson Demons. It had been two weeks since I bid Megumin farewell and left Axel. During this time, I visited two cities, but I didn't find any adventuring companions. Actually, it didn't matter any more that I couldn't find any companions. As long as I had enough power, I would be able to gain levels faster by hunting monsters alone. And I was aiming to become the top mage of the Crimson Demons. Not merely to catch up to Megumin, but to surpass her. To accomplish this, I was willing to take risks and fight powerful monsters. So I had no time to look for companions any more. I sat in the shaking public carriage, and repeatedly tried to convince myself. What should I do? I was about to cry. Goddess Lady Aqua. I'm very sorry that I lied. I really want some companions. I want reliable companions, preferably humans, no. As long as we can converse, it doesn't matter if they are humans or not. I want companions that can adventure with me. Just then, I heard a voice next to me. Hey, are you okay? You have been shaking your head for some time. Are you unwell? It seemed I was so troubled that I unknowingly started acting strangely. I shook my head at the worried One San who was talking to me. No no problem. I'm just bothered by something. Sorry. I'm not a suspicious person. I said hurriedly as I felt my face heat up from embarrassment. That One San smiled gently. Is it? From your appearance, you must be a traveling mage. Don't strain yourself too much, okay? The One San said and handed something over to me. It was some packaged snacks. Ah, uh, this. This is very tasty. Why don't you have some? She smiled at my confusion. Th thank you very much. Snacks. I remembered when I came to Axel with Megumin, 
I got some snacks on the public carriage too. It was the aunt who had a kid with her. Those memories flashed across my mind as I took the snack. Oh. Your eyes. Are you a crimson demon? The One San removed her hood and looked at my eyes. There was only yellow in her eyes. The One San had short red hair. She looked at my eyes in nostalgia. Ah, yes. I'm a crimson demon. Ah. Uh, my my name. It's fine. You don't need to say it if you're embarrassed. I know the names of crimson demons are very special. The One San hurriedly stopped me as I was about to announce my name. What a kind person. I felt it was rare to meet such a knowledgeable person. There were only two of us in the carriage. It seemed there were few passengers today. By the way, what's bothering you? If you don't mind, you can talk to me about it. As I said Itadaki Mas, and ate the snacks, the One San continued smiling. My trouble. Ah, uh, it's a bit embarrassing. I told her everything that happened so far, even though she was a stranger. The events involving how I left the Crimson Demon village with a friend for the town of Axeltown. Even with the most favorable qualities and conditions, I still couldn't find any companions. I left my old friend behind and began my own journey in order to surpass her. As the One San listened to my story, she closed her eyes. After a while. Is that so? I'm the same. My subordinates, who were with me for a long time. They left this world one by one. Separation is really so painful. She said and smiled in a somewhat lonely look. This One San must have experienced a lot. Ah. Uh, don't feel sad. Oh. Sorry, no problem. We merely parted our ways for a while. It isn't as if I will never see them again. What do you intend to do next? Me? I haven't decided. Since I want to gain levels quickly, I should be going somewhere with more powerful monsters. The One San nodded in understanding. Then, do you want to travel with me? I'm going to visit the hot springs in a certain city. Sometimes, I travel with adventurers too. I might look like this, but I'm actually very strong. Okay. I quickly agreed as I suppressed the urge to interrupt her. The One San was shocked. Is is that so? Uh. The city I'm planning to visit is Alcanrisha. Oh. Someone finally invited me to travel together, yet her destination had to be Alcanrisha. I didn't think that I would return to the city with those people. What is it? Something wrong with Alcanrisha? Hmm. That, ah. Uh. Actually, I stayed in that city for a while. I got dragged into an incident involving the minions of the Demon King's army. The One San's expression changed when she heard Demon King's army. Minions of the Demon King's army? But it's too early for the plans involving Alcanrisha. She softly mumbled to herself. Then? What did the Demon King's army do in Alcanrisha? Ah, there was a terrorist attack to turn all the hot springs in the town into tokorotten slime. W.H. what? Hey, are you sure this is the work of the Demon King's army? I, I have never heard of such a ridiculous terrorist act. Because after the incident, someone saw the silhouette of a female devil. So the Axis cultists were certain that it was doubtlessly the work of the Demon King's army. They said, everything bad happening in this city is due to the Demon King's army. What do they mean by that? The One San violently grabbed my shoulders. It was useless to complain to me. Ah. Uh, anyway, that's how it was. A lot of things happened, so I don't really want to go to that city now. And, Onesan, please be careful. There are very strange people in that town. I realized that from your statements earlier. Thanks. Then the carriage slowed down and finally stopped. It seemed we have arrived. Then, I suppose we'll part here? I need to get on the carriage leaving for Alcanrisha. The One San stood up and sighed without enthusiasm. Ah, uh, that. I'm really sorry, even though you invited me. I have never been invited by others before. I I will never forget this. It it's fine to forget it. I just feel that your magic power is especially strong. You have a lot of potential, so I was rather interested in you. 
Don't be too serious about this. The One San smiled anxiously. Then I'm leaving. Both training and making friends are very important. Be sure to work hard in both areas. Or else you would become the Demon King, okay? She got off the carriage and waved at me. After the One San left, the carriage slowly started to move again. I put my face out of the window and waved to the One San. I engraved her words in my head. Or else, you would become the Demon King, okay? That was a famous story about the Demon King. It was a story about the lonely Demon King with a very strange name. The story about the powerful Demon King was to avoid letting one's children become lonely like the Demon King. If one was alone, that special power would be meaningless. But that's not a problem. I still had that. How should I say it? Companion, or friend, or crony. Yes, that rival. I still had that rival. One day, I will surpass her and become the chief of the Crimson Demons. I watched the One San walk away and silently made my resolution. Then, I suddenly realized something. I forgot to ask the One San's name. Epilogue My name is Megumin. I'm the top mage of the Crimson Demons, a mage that uses explosion magic. I had driven off the evil god's minions and defeated two greater devils. Recruiting frontline jobs there are three open spots. Any priests? This is a profitable job involving driving off goblins. One open spot. Someone like me was. Hungry. I'm starving. I was on the verge of starvation. Today, I was also in the corner of the Adventurers Guild, waiting for someone to post a notice to recruit party members. How did it become like this? Even though I gave the reward from the Adventurers Guild to Rex, the story of Hoost being defeated by me should be well known to other adventurers. Then, why wasn't there an adventuring party that would recruit me? Before Ionion left, she gave me all the remaining war funds we borrowed from Cecily. She forcefully pretended to be generous and called it a farewell gift. No. Wrong. At that time, I was overly optimistic, believing that, as the person who defeated Hoost, every party would invite me and I would make a lot of money. And things ended up like this. Hey. What are you doing here? Still haven't found anyone to party with you? There was a voice above my head as I sprawled on the table. I knew who it was without even looking. It was Rex. What? Your wounds are healed? And are you here to mock me? Are you picking a fight? I'm very hungry now so I'm in a bad mood. If you are picking a fight, I will take you on. After all, it is in our nature as crimson demons. No, no, wrong. I won't dare to pick a fight with you. Spare me. I didn't mean it that way. Hearing my words as I sprawled on the table, Rex was scared out of his wits. Hey, if no party wants you, why not join my party? He said in a tone as if he was inviting me for lunch. I quickly raised my head and grabbed Rex's belt. What did you just say? Uh. No. I'm just asking if you want to join my party. After all, my party is quite famous. I think someone like you, who could use that powerful magic, would be useful. An elite team was inviting me to join. Elaborate. Tell me more details. Ah. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, how should I say this? For us. The monsters in this region are no longer worth the effort, so, ah. Uh. Rex pointed to the guild door with his thumb. Sophie and Terry were there outside with their luggage. Dot. We intend to move our base of operation to the war zone, that is, at the capital. We think we could earn more there. This suggestion itself was very attractive. There are a lot of enemies there, and powerful ones at that. If you join, you would surely accomplish a lot, even if it was your one use spell. When I thought about my own future, going with them to the capital might be the correct choice. Capital, ha. Huh. Would I become a liability since my level is still low? I said as I let go of Rex's belt. Ah? What are you saying? If you are considered a liability, then we are practically. And? I interrupted Rex's sentence. Can't you stay here for a while more? I'm starting to like this town. 
I said and smiled. What a strange fellow. But this town is full of weirdos, so I guess it suits you. Rex said in amusement and smiled. Well, then we're leaving. I heard the Demon King's army is becoming more active. We need to hurry to the Imperial capital and make a name for ourselves. He turned and left as he waved at me. In a moment of mixed emotions, I watched him leave without knowing what to say, and suddenly came back to my senses. Oh no! I shouldn't be stubborn at this time. At least, I should have let him treat me to a meal. It was too late for regret. I could only walk towards the notice board. The recruitment notices were probably still the same ones as before. Sigh. I was starving. Now was not the time to be proud. Should I pester a party that was currently recruiting until they treat me to a meal, even if they reject me in the end? At this time, I discovered a notice that I had never seen before. A recruitment notice that was limited to advanced jobs. It was awfully demanding to make such a request in a town full of rookies. But luckily, I met this requirement. I was very concerned about the notice saying, the current party consists of a rude person with the weakest job and a super beautiful and excellent archpriest. My bad premonitions were always quite accurate. The self-proclaimed beautiful and excellent archpriest reminded me of that person who left a few days ago. But I was so hungry that I was almost reduced to a skeleton. What kind of party was this? When I saw the duo that made up the recruiting party, I was stunned. It was the strange duo that I frequently encountered. Because the recruitment notice was too specific, nobody approached them until now. Hey, let's lower our standards. Our goal is to defeat the Demon King, so such conditions were necessary. However, isn't only recruiting top-tier jobs a bit too grueling? The young man was right. The watery blue-haired girl lazily sprawled on the table. Uck. But. She seemed unwilling to compromise. They should be the ones who posted that notice. And this was the self-proclaimed beautiful and excellent Archpriest. Archpriest? beautiful archpriest with watery blue hair? I smiled deviously. No wonder nobody in the town could find her no matter how hard they tried. Looking at the girl who sprawled lazily on the table, it was difficult for anyone to think of her as a beautiful archpriest. However, I felt that if I joined them, it would be very difficult for me. I didn't really have the right to say that, though. If this goes on, no one will apply. You might have a top-tier job, but mine's the weakest. I'll lose my place if elites suddenly surround me. How about lowering the entry requirements? Despite my bad premonitions, I continued to approach their table. I had to pretend to be a cool mage and greet them despite my weariness. I saw the notice to recruit adventurers with top tiers jobs. Are you the ones who posted it? But I felt that these two people... When I saw them elsewhere, they seemed very playful. I was probably a weirdo myself, so maybe it wasn't bad to be with them. This was Axel, the town of rookies. This town was the starting point for me. I was merely passing by. Yet I decided to stay here in this town. The duo raised their heads to dumbly look at me. I valiantly flicked my cloak. My name is Megumin. My calling is that of an archwizard, and one who controls the strongest offensive magic, explosion. Short story, The Highly Respected Crimson Demons. This happened back when I was exploring Axel with Ionion. Hey, aren't those two Crimson Demons? W wait, are you serious? Crimson Demons, you mean that clan of super-powerful mages that even the Demon King's army is afraid of, right? We could hear such whispers coming from behind us as we walked past a certain street. I maintained a calm appearance, and glanced at Ionion beside me. She seemed to be acting as usual, but I could see the edges of her mouth constantly twitching upwards. I'm probably in the same state right now. Behind us, the two men continued their whispered conversation. Speaking of crimson demons, every single one of them is an extremely skilled mage, and have mana far beyond those of regular mages. Hey, did you know? It seems like the crimson demons have built a watchtower next to their village from which they can keep watch on the demon king's castle. 
That's why the Demon King's army need to keep a significant force in the castle at all times. If they commit those forces to an attack and leave the castle lightly guarded, the Crimson Demons will immediately know and launch an attack. It's all thanks to them that things are so peaceful around here. My smile is probably showing by now. I can tell from looking at Yunion's expression. We pretended to be very interested in the town of Axel, curiously looking around and purposefully slowing down our pace. It's definitely not because we wanted to hear what the two guys behind us were saying. Yes, we are just extremely interested in the goods on display at a nearby store. The storekeeper who was sitting cross-legged on the ground looked up at us and said, Welcome, but if you are just here to window shop, I must ask that you leave quickly. These are all items that most adventurers can't make use of, after all. Wait, you two are crimson demons. He exclaimed in surprise upon seeing our eyes. Seemingly regretting his words, the store owner hurriedly said, How could I not recognize that the two of you are crimson demons, that clan that's an important exporter of magic items? Please, browse my wares. These are all items that regular adventurers can't utilize, but the two of you can definitely make use of them. Please, go ahead and browse to your heart's content. In particular, this is the jewel of my store. The owner picked up many items for us to peruse. Ah, no, we were just a little curious, we don't really intend to buy anything. Eonion and I hurriedly moved to decline, but... As expected of crimson demons. Even that brusque shopkeeper is enamored with them. Yeah, that old man wouldn't sell his items to someone he doesn't judge worthy no matter how much money they offer, but he has even taken out his prized item for those too. The two guys behind us sounded quite impressed. Seems like the owner of this store is quite famous. Hearing their words, Eonium desperately tried to suppress her smile as she picked up an item off the shelf. Yeah, this doesn't look too bad indeed. Saying that, she handed over the item to me. Hmm, yeah, this is pretty well made. I can't feel any magic from it, but the craftsmanship is quite marvelous. To be honest, I have no idea what exactly is the item Eonion handed over to me, nor could I detect any kind of magic from it, but it must be a good product. Seeing Eonion pick that item up, the owner exclaimed in shock. I I didn't expect you to take a liking to that. You two have a good eye. That's only meant to be used to attract customers. It's not for sale, but... I like the looks of you, so, very well, I'll sell it. Ooh, how amazing. Hearing the owner's words, the two men behind us raised a shocked voice. It seems like a good deal, Eonion. Yeah Megumin, I didn't expect to find something like this in the town of beginners. We said that in a voice loud enough to be heard by everyone present, before buying the item and leaving the scene under the envious gaze of the onlookers. After rounding the corner, both of us squatted down at the same time. Megumin, just what is this? Is 100,000 Eris really a good price for this thing? How would I know? I should be asking that of you. This is a piggy bank no matter how you look at it, but it must have some kind of hidden power. Just as we were whispering to each other as to why exactly we bought such a thing. Ah, thanks for your hard work, you two. Here's your cut. Sorry for always taking your money like this, old man. Still, you're pretty skilled. I didn't expect crimson demons to fall for your tricks so easily. We heard such a conversation coming from around the corner. Crimson demons have high mana and intelligence. That's the voice of the storekeeper from before. But, did you know? Crimson demons are really easy to trick. They are especially vulnerable to phrases like jewel of my store or legendary something or the other. Hearing the three of them erupt into laughter, Ionion and I emerged from the corner. But, did you know? Crimson demons are very short-tempered. But, did you know? Crimson demons will always rise to meet the expectations of anyone looking for a fight. The three men bolted like rabbits, and Ionion and I furiously chased after them. Short story, dear on chan I finally found someone I knew after wandering around the village for quite some time. That girl who's sitting on the bench next to the store selling roasted sweet potatoes and writing about something is Onei-chan's friend. Her name is... Amurei. 
I found Amurei. It's Araway. My name isn't Amurei, it's Araway. What's the matter, Komiko? You seem quite worked up. Do you need me for something? Seeing me, Amurei squatted down and brought her face down to my level. I haven't eaten anything for three days. Weren't you eating heartily after conning Bakorili yesterday? Oh fine, how about I treat you to a roasted sweet potato? I nodded enthusiastically, and Amore grinned in response and ordered a roasted sweet potato for me. As I bit into my snack, I remembered what I originally came here for. Amore, this. Can you read it for me? M. My name is Araway a letter? Oh, it's a letter from Megumin. Let me see. Amore opened the letter with an expectant expression, and slowly read the contents out loud. To my dear sister, Komiko. By the time you found someone to read this letter to you, I would have already found a great party in Axel and spread my name around. On the journey, I taught a very effective recruiting method to the Axis cult and saved them by doing so, and I also defeated a female devil who attacked our caravan with my powerful spell, and did a lot of other amazing things. Behave yourself at home and look forward to letters of my wonderful exploits. Have you been eating well? Are you brushing your teeth every day? Did you remember to lock the doors and windows before going to bed? I'm bored now. That's way too quick. Oh well, all that's left is just her fussing endlessly over you anyways. I guess Megumin has a sisterly side too. Amore let out a small chuckle as she continued scanning the letter. Oh, there's a mailing address written at the bottom. Seems like she's rented out a postbox so you can send her a letter whenever you miss her, Komiko. So, what do you think? I can help you write a letter if you want. I don't miss on a chan, and writing a letter sounds like a chore, so I don't think I will. Is is that so? I think it's better to send a reply in this situation. It'll make Megumin happy, and, to be honest, this is probably her way of saying that she misses you a lot. Okay, let's write a letter. Even after leaving the village, on a chan is still a spoilt little girl who craves the attention of others. But if it will make Ane Chan happy, then I should let Amure help me write a reply. That's good. So, what do you want to write? How about writing that you're doing well, and you can look after the house even by yourself? This will put her at ease. Hearing Amure's suggestion, I nodded my head and said. Then write. Now that Ane Chan isn't here, all of your food is now mine. The other adults are very worried about me now that Ane Chan isn't around so they always give me a lot of food. I'm very happy that Ane chan isn't around. There's no need to rush to return home, Ane chan Don't write that, it'll make Megumin cry. I did tell you to put her at ease, but maybe we should change the wording a little? Amore balled up the letter that she was writing, and mumbled something that sounded like honest children are really scary. Then, how about? There are a lot of different people who treat me to food every day. Bakorali has been crying about how he's been getting less to eat after I've been heading over every day. Then his father shouted at him to go find a job if he doesn't like it and started using magic inside the house. I ignored that and continued eating. You really run into a lot of incredible situations. I should say this, but you shouldn't just continue to eat in that situation. You should hurry up and run. Seriously, I feel like you'll become a really incredible person in the future. Oh, and. I became friends with a black and huge and strong goblin recently. He said that he'll become my familiar when I've become a great mage. Ko Komiko, what did you just say? What exactly do you mean by goblin? Please tell One San more details. Amore threw away her pen and roughly shook me by the shoulders. You didn't go outside the village, did you? One San won't get angry, so tell me the truth. I don't go outside often. That means you go outside occasionally, right? Listen, there are a lot of really strong monsters outside the village. You'll make Megumin worry, so don't go outside the village again. Seeing Amore's serious expression, I firmly nodded. Sigh. I can't put this into the letter either. Just what exactly is that huge goblin anyway? Anyway, let's write some words of encouragement at the end. That'll make Megumin happy. But, yeah, you'll definitely become an incredible person in the future, Komiko. Definitely. Amore sighed and patted my head. 
Then, right. Please kill the demon king and become the strongest mage. Yes, yes, bringing up the demon king right now is a stroke of genius. It'll definitely motivate Megumin. As expected of the girl who will become an incredible person in the magical community. I didn't misjudge you, Komiko. Be sure to bring back the body of the demon king. I always wanted to know what a demon king tasted like. Sincerely, Komiko. This girl is already incredible.